and their hard work. These kids have made quite a sacrifice to play football, and they've given up free time, they've worked hard, and, and uh, their, their success reflects on the community. It brings uh, publicity to the community, and I think the community ought to be grateful for what they've done. All right, now let's get the whole sports story. Exciting game down on the dome, Barrel Bruffin. It was, wasn't it? Uh, number one team in 4A against the defending state champs. Unfortunately for folks here in College Station, we did not have a repeat winner in 4A. The a and Consolidated Tigers trying to be the first team in five years to successfully repeat as the 4A champs. Unfortunately, the Tigers lost their lead for good against Waxahachie in the fourth quarter. And as John Oakey reports, the Tigers were riddled by injuries in the big game and came up short for the second time in the 4A championship showdown. The four A state championship did not get off to a good start for the Tigers. On the opening kickoff, Rudy Majet is hit and injures his right ankle. The guy who had accounted for almost 2,000 yards of total offense won't touch the ball again until the third quarter, and then he rushes only two times for three yards. I didn't think I'd be, you know, at my, as usual, but I was going to try. But when I tried to get up on it and move, I just couldn't put any weight on it. You just never know when you go in, and uh, it's not a very good omen when you lose your tailback first play. So Rogers and the staff make some quick changes. They go to the shotgun, and in five plays, they hit pay dirt. Jeff Watson and Troy Walters with a 33-yard score. It's the eighth straight time Consol scored on their opening drive. In the second, after a box punt, Waxahachie travels just 28 yards to tie it up at seven on Lamont Moore's one-yard keeper. Midway through the second, Cal Bryant added his name to the record books again. The 32-yarder gave him his 29th career field goal. That ties him with the most threes in Texas high school football history. And that will be your halftime score, 10 to 7. Second half, Waxahachie takes their first lead of the day. Moore goes to the right side, 47 yards, and they're up 14 to 10. Moore finishes the game with 102 of the Indians' 355 yards on the ground. However, in that series, Tigers retake the lead. Using the no huddle, Watson directs them on a five-play, 69-yard drive. His pass to Pat Meese puts Consol up 17 to 14. The Indians go back up 20 to 17. When on the ensuing kickoff, Watson filling in, he'll go 92 yards and with 8.55 to play in the game, the defending state champs were ahead 24 to 20. But led by Moore, the Indians storm back. They score and get the two-point try to go up by four. And after Consol can't do anything offensively, the Indians get the ball back. They gamble on fourth and three at midfield. It pays off. They run out the box and claim their first state championship, 28 to 24 your final. They were a good team. They had a lot of quickness, and uh, we prepared for it. We just didn't execute everything like we should have. They were big. They had that quickness. Uh, we just couldn't set down the run tonight. They had the best rushing team in the state, and they showed it to today. Um, all, you can do, all I can do is work on next year, but these seniors are the best guys to play with. Man. Look back at it, we did good. I mean, we got here. I mean, someone had to win, and I wish them all the luck. Tonight, they're by far the better team, you know, but any other given night, we made it came out on top. The Tigers end the season the way they began it with a loss, but they lived up to everyone's expectations. It was an exciting game. However, they finished the season 14-2. From the Astrodome, John Oakey, New Star 3 Sports. Thank you, John. Now, if you missed today's game in the Astrodome, and it was a good one, TV3 will broadcast the game right here, right after the weekend report. That will be in about 10 minutes. Four other teams were crowned champions today across the state for the second straight year. District 13-5A is the home of a state champ. The Tipple Wildcats rolled all over Houston late Yates, claiming the Division II championship in 5A. The catalyst for the Wildcats was Gerald Watson. He ripped up 145 yards and three touchdowns. Temple won at 38 to 20, the second state championship for Temple head coach Bob McLean. The other one was back in 1979. In the 3A game, it was this, it was delayed for over an hour because of electrical failure with the lights at Floyd Casey Stadium, but that did not slow down Dean Johnson of South Lake Carroll. He could have probably run in the dark and scored. Already he has five touchdowns, three on the ground and two through the air. He is a one-man Cold Spring wrecking machine. It's the start of the third quarter, and South Lake Carroll leads this one 41 to nothing. For the second straight year, the Shorthorns of Schulenberg will win the 2A state championship. Sophomore Jason, or that is, uh, yeah, Jason Houston rambled for 201 yards, including two touchdowns, while 2A Offensive Player of the Year Casey Tabor also added two TDs. Goldthwaite rushed for over six, only 16 yards on the day as Schulenberg wins it 35-20. And in Class A, the Bartlett Bulldogs have won their second state championship in three years. 
Claude Mathis, three touchdowns on 233 yards rushing. Bartlett beat Sudan 33-26. Offensively, Mathis was impressive, but on defense, it was where he preserved the win. Two interceptions, and that would be your hit of the night. College football, the Division I AA champion has been decided, and Marshall wins it by three over Youngstown State, 31-28. A year ago, these same two teams fought it out. The Penguins won it then, a little payback as the Thundering Herd take the championship this year. To the NFL, the Giants took some of the attention off their head coach Ray Hanley's job security for at least a little while. Giants scored on five straight possessions. They snapped a five-game losing streak. Rodney Hampton scored three TDs, while Jeff Hotlett tossed a pair of scoring strikes. 35-21 loss keeps the Kansas City Chiefs playoff jeopardy, or playoff hopes, that is, in jeopardy. San Francisco 49ers clinched the NFC West title this afternoon with a 21-14 win over Tampa Bay. The game winner came in the third quarter. Steve Young with Jerry Rice, 31 yards. They clinched the home field advantage throughout the playoffs. The Aggie basketball team is now just one win away from their 300th victory at G. Raleigh White Coliseum. Tonight, they beat Texas Southern 68 to 63. They're six straight over the Tigers. They jumped out to a quick six point lead in the early going. David Edwards passes it inside to Tony McGinnis. He finished with 11 on the night. Off the inbounds pass, Damon Johnson goes inside for two of his 18 points. Then Edwards, he led the way with 20, throws up the prayer and it falls. And then watch this play by David Edwards to steal and watch the pass between his legs. He starts the fast break. Chuck Henderson seals it. 68-63 is your final. They'll be back in action Tuesday against Florida. Back at G. Raleigh White Coliseum. And again, this reminder, what do you say, about six or seven minutes. We will yeah, broadcast the AM Consolidated Waxahachie game. It was a defeat for the Tigers, but man, this one was really exciting. And I, uh, I didn't get to go down there, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch it, take Me a too. look at it. Me too. Everybody else should. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, great, Darryl. great season for the Tigers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. State championship tonight. They meet the Indians from Waxahachie to retain the title of state champs of Class 4A. KBTX TV3 is proud to bring you the broadcast of today's game, played earlier in the Astrodome. This broadcast is being made possible by Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu, Commerce National Bank, and your Bryan College Station McDonald's. Now, from the Astrodome in Houston, Texas, it's the state championship of Class 4A. From the Astrodome in Houston, Texas, it's the UIL 1992 Class 4A State High School Football Championship. Hello, everybody. I'm Cliff Brown, along with Ted Coy, a former All-American at the University of Texas, and we're delighted to be here in the Astrodome for this Class 4A State High School Football Championship between the very best in high school football in 4A. A&M Consolidated defending their state championship crown they won last year will take on the number one and undefeated ranked Waxahachie Indians. Ted, you've got to like the electricity in the air in the Astrodome this afternoon. Cliff, this is what they play for. Going way back to the summer in August and the hot, sweaty workouts, every person, every team shoots for a championship game like this. And this is a dandy. This is one of those where you can just feel the electricity in the fans, you can just sense the determination, the preparation that the players have gone through, and both sides are ready, they're well, well coached, they're tremendously talented, and I think we're in for a classic game. You know, the Waxahachie Indians have yet to taste defeat. They're 15 and 0, and some say this is the very best of a three-year program that has seen them in the quarterfinals, and now here they are at the very pinnacle. You know, they have a lot of confidence. They've got a lot of confidence as a team. You know, the old saying, winning and unity build each other, and that's certainly exemplified by Waxahachie. They've got a very, very stout defense, and their offense is capable of scoring at any point on the field. So they're, they're anxious to get this one underway. Now, what about A&M Consolidated? They break all kinds of UIL records. Last year, they won the state championship. They have been to this very stadium a number of times, most of the time winning the state title. You know, A&M Consolidated is very remarkable. They, over the last four years, they've been in this state championship game three out of the four years. Coach Ross Rogers has put together a very, very fine program, and they, too, look to themselves with a lot of confidence. They can score big. They run a uh, multiple-type offense, and on defense, they're very stingy. They're very hard to score upon, and they just feel they can win this game, too. 
When we talk about team speed, you first got to look to walk the hatchet. They have blazing speed. You know, when you look at just the sheer speed and the importance of it in a football game, Waxahachie might have the edge. They've got a lot of speed uh, uh, on the corners. They've got a lot of speed with their running game, and uh, they can really cover a lot of ground. Now, A&M Consolidated has the one thing the Indians do not have, and that's playoff experience in the big game. You know, over the last four years, Coach Ross Rogers has taken his team into 21 playoff games, and they've won 19, and that's very impressive. As we said, they've been in this state championship game four times. So when you talk playoffs, a &M Consolidated certainly knows what that's all about. Well, there's no doubt about it. We're in for four full quarters of exciting state championship high school football. We'll be back for the opening kickoff right after this. C.J. Allen and his staff at Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu wish to thank all their customers for an outstanding 1992. To help move out inventory by the end of 92, all Oldsmobiles and Isuzus are at invoice prices. That's right, now through December 31st, any Oldsmobile or Isuzu in stock will be sold at invoice. Plus discounts up to $10,000 on Cadillac. No reasonable offer refused, so hurry in to Allen Olds Cadillac Isuzu during the invoice sale, now through December 31st. Happy holidays from Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu. A Big Mac and a Diet Coke, please. Get the extra value meal. It's only $2.99, plus you get fries. We'll just have some of yours. No, no, I order fries because I want fries. They're mine, not yours. If you want fries with dinner, get your own. Mom, could I have some of my fries? I'll just have some of your father's. No. With our $2.99 Big Mac extra value meal and low-priced Happy Meals, the whole family can get exactly what they want for dinner. What you want is what you get. Free refill? I'll just have some of his. <laughs> For some time now, you've seen our commercials on TV. They're not just ads. They're a commitment from Commerce National Bank to the people of Bryan College Station. Does it make a difference where you bank? Yes. We're committed to providing all the financial strength and services you need, both today and in the future. And that's a personal commitment from me to you. Commerce National Bank. A Cadcraft carving in solid walnut is the perfect Christmas or graduation gift for the Aggie on your list. Call 1-800-793-5443. Welcome to the Astrodome, where in just moments, the Class 4A UIL State High School Football Championship is about to get underway. Cliff Brown, along with Ted Coy, here to bring you all the exciting action for this 4A state championship contest between two outstanding football powers, the Waxahachie Indians and the A&M Consolidated Tigers. Let's take a look at our starting lineup for the 1992 Waxahachie Indians on offense. We have Jeremy Morgan, Charles Atchison, Joe Garber, Jerry Hollybeck, Jason Howard, and Travis Allstott. And quarterback, we have Lamont Moore, Corey Porner, Creighton Phillips, Jabbar Russell, and John Dollar. For the AM Consolidated Tigers on defense, they'll counter with Tommy Jackson, Johnny Schwab, Eddie Smith, Cliff Harris, Shatner Gooden, Jimmy Zoon, Nick Eastman, Jarvis Mabel, Jason Williams, Pat Jones, and Dwayne Price. Also, Creighton Thompson, Bo Beavers, Mike Better, Dan Rohr, Matt Swab, John Chancellor on offense for the Tigers. Also, James Williams, Pat Mize, Jeff Watson, Rudy Majetti, Austin Banks. For Walk the Hatchie on defense, we have Corey Ponner, Joe Garber, Kenny Casel, Corey Crane, Dante Edwards, and Robert Jones. We also have on defense Eric Farr, Vincent Terry, John Jefferson, Isaiah Borland, and John Dollar. And that'll round up the starting lineups for both of these two teams. And Ted, we talked about it in the opening. You've got two teams that have some very impressive credentials coming into the state championship game. Here's a look at the results of the playoffs. You know, we've got uh, both teams having come into this state championship game with impressive uh, playoff results. Waxahachie had big wins, uh, especially last week against Estacado, 70 to 6. You just don't find a margin that big in the playoffs. Uh, as we look statistically, Waxahachie is 
averaging 426 yards per game on offense. On the other side, though, AM Consolidated is, has a healthy 375 yards per game average uh, with offensive unit. On defense, it's equally as impressive. Waxahachie is yielding only 187 yards per uh, by the opponent per game, and uh, A&M Consolidated has a very similar 185 yards per game. So, Cliff, as we look at these two teams lined up statistically before the game, we see them very, very similar in the comparison. Well, you talk about A&M Consolidated's results in playoffs. They got to the finals with a tremendous 37-27 win over Gregory Portland. They also looked like they were really on a, had a head of steam going, obviously so, as they got to the finals once again, and they will be defending the state championship crown. Now, before we go down on the field for our opening kickoff, let's pause for this timeout. Micon Engineering designs electrical components used by companies around the world. And out of this world, too. I'm Paige Heller, president of Micon Engineering. And I'm Alan Hansen, president of Commerce National Bank. Micon was one of only four Texas companies to receive the contract for Space Station Freedom. Without the business capital loan from Commerce National, we wouldn't be working on the NASA project. Commerce National, the only bank that can call College Station home. C.J. Allen and his staff at Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu wish to thank all their customers for an outstanding 1992. To help move out inventory by the end of 92, all Oldsmobiles and Isuzus are at invoice prices. That's right, now through December 31st, any Oldsmobile or Isuzu in stock will be sold at invoice. Plus, discounts up to $10,000 on Cadillacs. No reasonable offer refused, so hurry in to Allen Olds Cadillac Isuzu during the invoice sale, now through December 31st. Happy holidays from Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu. Waxahachie Indians will kick off to the A&M Consolidated Tigers. Doing the kicking chores for the Indians will be number 11, Samson Gannett, 148-pound sophomore. And right away, Ted, we'll get an opportunity to see the high-powered offense of the A&M Consolidated Tigers. You know, as we wait for the opening kickoff, a and Consolidated has uh, Rudy Majed and Jason Watson back to receive the deep kick. And this game is just about to be underway. The kick to the right side, taking it to 10, the 15, the 20, and all the way up to the 27-yard line where he's brought down. Will Smith returning the kickoff for the AM Consolidated Tigers. So they'll begin their first offensive series from their own 27 yard line. And that's not your screen that you're looking at. That is smoke down on the floor of the Astrodome. Unfortunately, on that opening kickoff, an AM Consolidated player is down and will try to get that number as the trainers are attending to him. But, but on the pregame, Ceremonies, Cliff, as you mentioned, uh, there was, as the a &M Consolidated team came on the field, there was a smoke uh, released as part of that ceremony, and unfortunately in the Astrodome, with no wind available to move it on, it's just sort of lingered. Uh, it is gradually clearing out, but it'll uh, probably take another uh, mid, uh, first part of the first quarter before that's completely cleared, and we'll try to get a name of the injured uh, a and Consolidated player. It is somewhat ironic that the smoke puts a haze on the floor of the Astrodome since it's been cloudy, grisly, and foggy in Houston most of the day. Of course, the temperature is perfect. As we see the player, looks like he's okay. Rudy Majet uh, was injured on that play on the uh, return. He was helped off and that's a serious uh, situation for AM Consolidated because they really depend on him as a big part of their offense. Jeff Watson, the quarterback from the Tigers, from the shotgun. And he's going to fire a pass complete to Pat Mines. So Watson starts off the game through the air and nails Pat Mines, the flanker with a pass right on the bus. and m Consolidated likes to use a multiple attack with their offense. We can expect them to be in this shotgun uh, 
formation and a lot of times go with no huddle. And they like to hit all parts of the field. Again, from the shotgun. Pressure. Scramble. He's going to get good yardage. And Jeff Watson scrambling. Goes all the way up to about the 46-yard line. Jeff Watson got a lot of those yards on just his athletic ability. He was looking and wanting to throw, but the uh, coverage was there. One thing about AM Consolidated is they are able to attack all parts of the field, so they do get the defense spread out, in which case uh, Jeff Watson, when they were covered very alertly, uh, took off and had very significant gains. And send a man in motion to the left from the shotgun, a little shovel pass. Carrier was Austin Banks. Austin Banks took that little uh, short pass and uh, turned it into a very significant gain. And we're seeing a good flavor of what we can expect from the NM Consolidated offense. They hit all parts of the field, and they're uh, they're on the run just from the very start. A little razzle dazzle here in the opening first quarter of this 4A state championship game. It's second and five. The ball. On the Walker Hatchie 49 yard line. Again, a man in motion from the shotgun. A pass. He's got a man wide open. Complete to James Williams, the senior 130 pounds. And he was right on the button again. Once again, Jeff Watson from the shotgun or the deep snap sprints the one direction and that surely puts a lot of pressure on the defense because at the start of the play they've got to be defending the entire field and that sprint out puts a lot of concentration in one area the home run ball he's got a man open touchdown a and consolidated troy walter wide open down the left side and jeff watson hits him with a frozen rope and just like lightning, the defending state champions are on the scoreboard with 9.58 in the first period. Kyle Bryant, the kicker, and it's good. So, with our score, the AM Consolidated Tigers 7, the Wakahatchee Indians 0, let's call for this timeout. A Big Mac and a Diet Coke, please. Get the extra value meal. It's only $2.99, plus you get fries. We'll just have some of yours. No, no, I order fries because I want fries. They're mine, not yours. If you want fries with dinner, get your own. Mom, could I have some of my fries? I'll just have some of your father's. No. With our $2.99 Big Mac extra value meal and low-priced Happy Meals, the whole family can get exactly what they want for dinner. What you want is what you get. For refill? I'll just have some of his. A Cadcraft carving in solid walnut is the perfect Christmas or graduation gift for the Aggie on your list. Call 1-800-793-5443. Welcome back to the Astrodome, where the A&M Consolidated Tigers, Ted, have wasted very little time in getting on the scoreboard. And boy, did we see a variety of plays in that drop. You know, we saw a very good sampling, a very good flavor of what uh, A&M Consolidated likes to do. They will... Uh, force the defense to defend all parts of the field. They can go with a short pass, they can go with the quick hitting running play, and then as they were executing that and had the defense having to defend the shorter passes, they come with a big pass to Troy Watson for, for the uh, touchdown and they're seven points up. Kyle Bryant to kick off for the Tigers. 55 and 5 in the last four seasons for the AM Consolidated Tigers as we see Bryant's kick. High taken at about the 10 yard line. Up to the 20. And John Jefferson gets it all the way back up to the 28 before he's finally brought down in part by number 88 for AM Consolidated, Tom Jackson. So now we have the opportunity to watch the Waxahachie Indians with their high-flying offensive machine. Last week, as we said in the opening, they beat Lubbock Estacado 70-6 in a semifinal matchup. 
Lamont Moore, the quarterback, hands off right up the middle. Waxahachie likes to get started with their running game. They depend on it. They run the beer type offense, and we're going to expect to see them uh, working up and down the line of scrimmage initially. They do go to the air when they go uh, to the passing game. Lamont Moore is a very effective passer, but generally speaking, Waxahachie likes to get started with the running game first. Second down and four, and the Indians jump off slide. You know, when uh, in a game with the two uh, two offenses and two defenses so evenly matched, and where the opening kickoff, the, the first drive, as AM consolidated, showed and scored, that puts a little bit more pressure on the offense of Waxahachie to get going. They may be a little bit quick on the trigger, and we see the offsides penalty result. So they're now going to operate from their own 30-yard line. Second down and nine. Nine minutes left in the first period. A&M consolidated, leaving, leading seven to nothing. Hand off, off the right side that time. Once again, Sammy Overton on the carry. Overton has had an incredible year. Coming into this game, Overton has gained 1,909. He has a good chance to go over the 2,000 mark in this game. Also, Lamont Moore, from his quarterback position, has a 1,206 yards gain, and he's also passed for over 1,400 yards from, in the passing game. Moore, little look-in pass to Vincent Terry. Complete. Picks up the first down all the way up to about the 46-yard line. And that little look-in pass that time was such what a quick release to see by Lamont Moore very effective with the offense that Waxahachie runs because they run the veer so effectively and are so quick hitting that oftentimes the defense will let that little quick look-in pass go un uncovered and Lamont Moore was very effective in reading that and getting the ball in. Moore on a keeper around the right side, pitches it out. Overton walking the tightrope down the right sideline. And what a great job by Lamont Moore of holding on to the football until they had absolutely no room to spare and pitches it out to Overton. Well, that's the option at its finest. You can coach and teach a player to play the quarterback position, but Lamont Moore just has that little undescribable ability of holding on to the very last minute to make that such a successful play. They bring the ball all the way down to the AM consolidated 31 yard line where they have picked up another first down. Terry in motion to the left. Hand off to Overton off left tackle. He'll get down near the 25 yard line. Most of the sports writers across the state predicted that this would be the premier game in the Texas High School Football Championships this weekend because Waxahachie is undefeated, ranked number one in the state. And of course, AM Consolidated, having won the title last year, seeking a repeat. Moore, again, hands off to the right side. And there's a good example of the quickness that you see the John Jefferson on the carry, and boy, do they fire out of the backfield in a hurry. Waxahachie is extremely quick coming out of their backfield. They get a good line surge. The offensive line does not have to hold their line block that long when they've got a set of offensive backs that are as quick as Waxahachie. And because of that, just the slightest opening allows them to get through and clear the line of scrimmage which on the other hand puts a lot of pressure on the defensive line and the linebackers to make those reads as quickly as they need to. Overton right up the middle. This time the AM consolidated defensive unit puts a halt to his running effort. They will mark the ball at about the 17 yard line. You will want to keep in mind, as we said earlier, Waxahachie likes the running game as their primary part of their offense. But off of that, they work the uh, throwback pass and the uh, play action pass. So we got to keep that in mind as they get down in this tough yardage if they opt to go to that. 
The Indians facing a second and seven situation. Right up the middle, LeJohn Jefferson. And we've got flags on the play. And we may have a motion penalty against the Waukahatchee Indians. Illegal procedure being signaled by uh, the referee against Waxahachie, so that's going to be bringing them back. Although this football game is in its early stages, you can clearly see the offensive firepower of both teams. The quick strike capability of AM Consolidated has already earned them a touchdown. And on the ensuing drive following the kickoff to the Indians, Waxahachie has driven the ball all the way down now to the Tiger 22-yard line. They send a man in motion. Dante Edwards to the left. Option down the left side. He'll get down to about the 18. So more on the option keeper that time. Was forced actually to run laterally, and that's what you want when you're pursuing that option quarterback there. And him consolidated did on that defensive play what they would want to do as far as defending the option. They don't want to let the ball get to the outside quick. They want to keep the ball at the line of scrimmage because they don't with the speed of walk past you, they cannot let, afford to let them turn the corner on them. Third and nine. Key third down here for the Indians. An option keeper pitches it out. Grabbed by LeJohn Jefferson. And boy, was he lucky because the option to him hit the floor first. You know, I mean, that's a typical uh, advantage of playing on the AstroTurf. If that was on the ground, I don't know that it would have bounced right back to uh, the, uh, the trail, the pitch man, but it did. And as a result, Waxahachie was fortunately to walk away retaining possession. And now we're going to see a field goal attempt. A sophomore will try it from the 25, which will mean a 35-yard kick. It's up, got the distance, and it's off to the left. So the walk to Hatchie Indians are just 20 yards or 25 yards away from Pater, and their first scoring strike goes for naught. But on these first two possessions by each of the offenses, Cliff, we've clearly seen they are both very capable of moving the football. We saw a and Consolidate on their first possession do pretty much what they wanted to. And likewise, when Waxahachie gets the football, they were able to execute the option with a great deal of effectiveness. a and Consolidated, lies in motion. And off back up to the middle, and here comes the Waxahachie Indian defensive unit. That really did a good job of stacking up Austin Banks. So often when you have two teams with explosive offensive machines, Ted, the defense is the key to victory, and both defensive units have played very well here in the opening. You know, in this playoff, the playoff game that both teams have played, and m Consolidated has yielded an average of only 14 points a game, whilst the Hatches defense has given up only an average of 4.4 points per game. Pass that time went incomplete. As we saw Watson trying to hit Dan. Dan Daniel Dan was, a, Daniel. was I'm a, sorry, I couldn't, I was, couldn't read the name. Was the receiver on that play, and actually we talked about Waxahachie being fortunate on their series not to have lost the fumble. Uh, NM Consolidate was fortunate that uh, Waxahachie's uh, John Jefferson didn't intercept that as it bounced off of his chest. Third and ten from the shotgun. A pass overthrown. And they're going to be forced to pop up the football. Good defensive coverage that time on the receivers downfield. And AM Consolidated will have to kick from deep within their own territory. Kyle Bryant do the punting from his own 10-yard line now. No rush. But 
the ball did roll back toward the Tigers territory and they're going to see the Indians have the football on the main consolidated 40. So Wasa Hatchie with the football now on the Indian Consolidated 40-yard line, first and 10, 7 to 0. Indian Consolidated leading with 335 left in the first period. The handoff off the right side. Six past one man. Six past two. There's a fumble on the play. He picks it up. Yes, sir. Turnover. Jason Williams was the AM Consolidated player that came up with that. Uh, Walks to hatch you was was uh, had fumble on that play and it was one of those that just bounced came up just right into the hands of anything consolidated and what a break for them so a key turnover by the Indian all is now on their own 27 yard line from the shotgun Watson in a championship game turnovers and penalties will kill you absolutely and both of these offenses are very capable of taking advantage quickly of a, of a miscue of that nature so the good news for walk the hatchie was at least they turned the ball over and a and consolidates into the field. The bad news is that gives a very potent offense the ball once again. A swing pass from Watson to Austin Banks. And what a tremendous defensive charge led by Eric Farr, the 210-pound senior, who was right there all over Austin Banks. Now, the pass was complete, but it was complete for a loss in yardage. The ball now on the 25-yard line. Eric Farr is showing one of the reasons why he was selected all state in class 4A football. And there's a short punt formation, a quick kick. And it's going to roll all the way down to about the 11-yard line of Walker Hatchie. But there's a flag on the play. There's a flag on the play, but what an effective uh, third down punt, quick kick for Bionium Consolidated. Well, there's a weapon you just don't see very often. Is it's going to be brought back, and obviously the element of surprise is not going to be used this time by the Tigers. But what a what a change in the tempo of the game. On one hand, AM Consolidated has put Wapahatchee back on their own 10-yard line, but with that penalty, it's going to be AM Consolidated's ball, but literally at the other end of the football field. And a big break for Wapahatchee because the ball had rolled all the way down to their own 11-yard line. You know, you talk about the breaks of a game early, and this is a big, big difference. We, one instance, we've got Wapahatchee deep in their own in the field. On the other hand, we've got AM consolidated with the ball deep in their own into the field. So, after the infraction, they will have the ball spotted at about the 14, make it the 13 yard line. Third down now. From the shotgun. Watson, swinging out to his right, fires incomplete. Just over the receiver's head. Actually, he had, uh, he had the receiver open just momentarily, but it was just a little bit too tall for him to make the reception. So now, once again, they face a fourth down punting situation, fourth and 24. Just a little over two minutes left in this first quarter. A&M consolidated, leading seven to zero. The punt from the five. Again, will be taken on the run at the 45. Skirting around to the left. He's got a wall behind him. He's got two blockers. And he'll be finally bounced out of hands at about the 28-yard line. Tremendous return by Rudy Majetti. 
You know, it's been said many times, uh, as Coach Darrell Royal has always said, in a close game, so often the difference lies in the kicking game. And so far in this first quarter, uh, the posi field position that Waxahachie has been enjoying has been putting the put there mainly through the kicking game. So far, the Indians have enjoyed field position over the Tigers. They just haven't cashed in on it. And off straight up the middle. And that time, the call, of course, went to number two for the Waxahachie Indians. The John Jefferson, the junior, 175-pound running back is one of many who have had an outstanding year for the Walk the Hatchie team. He picked up about three on the play, so it'll be second down and seven. Moore looking to pass, sweeping around the right side, will keep it, and they'll dance him out of bounds at about the 21. There we see again the versatility of the Walk the Hatchie offense. They like to go with the run, but they're able to off of the play action, freeze the defense enough to give the quarterback, in that case, time to make the read, which he did, and elected to keep the ball and turn it into positive yards. So they, too, are able to attack all parts of the field. Both of these teams have responded quite well, Ted, to third down situations. Here we have the third and three situations for the Indians. As we see more, down the right sideline on a keeper. He'll pick up the first. Stopped that time by Dwayne Price. Uh, a and consolidated. They mark the ball at the 15-yard line. It's first and 10. Walk the Hatchie. 109 left in this first quarter. The A&M Consolidated Tigers holding on to a 7-0 lead. But Waxahachie is knocking on the door. Corey Horner out to the left side. A sweep by Lamont Moore around the left side. Ducks inside. He'll get down to about the 12-yard line. Kid, it's just awfully hard to stop an option quarterback with that kind of quickness and speed, particularly if he has the ability to pass the football as well. A very good point, Cliff. He is able to put so much pressure on the, on the defense outside, and yet if the defense favors the outside, they are so dangerous straight up the middle and off tackle. So they really make the defensive line and linebackers be extremely disciplined. There's Overton on the carry off the left tackle. That time they put two receivers out wide to the right, handed off back to the left to Sammy Overton. And now they are apparently going to call a timeout. That's exactly what they will do, because that will be the end of our first quarter with our score, the a and Consolidated Tigers and the Walker Hexie Indian Zero. We'll be back for the second quarter right after these messages. The Class 4A state championship game between A&M Consolidated and Waxahachie is being made possible by Commerce National Bank, your Bryan College Station McDonald's, Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu, and KBTX TV3. A Cadcraft carving in solid walnut is the perfect Christmas or graduation gift for the Aggie on your list. Call 1-800-793-5443. C.J. Allen and his staff at Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu wish to thank all their customers for an outstanding 1992. To help move out inventory by the end of 92, all Oldsmobiles and Isuzus are at invoice prices. That's right, now through December 31st, any Oldsmobile or Isuzu in stock will be sold at invoice, plus discounts up to $10,000 on Cadillacs. No reasonable offer refused, so hurry in to Allen Olds Cadillac Isuzu during the invoice sale, now through December 31st. Happy holidays from Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu. <laughs> David, dinner time. Can I call you David, dinner. Come on, David, we're going to McDonald's. Whoa, we gotta go, guys. With our
a $2.99 Big Mac Extra Value Meal and low-priced Happy Meals, dinner at McDonald's should actually sound as good to you as it does to your kids. What you want is what you get at McDonald's tonight. I'm Alan Hansen, President of Commerce National Bank. Today, people expect a lot more from their bank. They want financial stability, products and services to meet their needs. That's exactly what you get when you bank with Commerce National. We are the only bank that can call College Station home. That's why we're committed to helping the businesses and individuals in the Bryan College Station area. Commerce National, the only bank that can call College Station home. Cliff Brown and Ted Coy here with you in the Astrodome for the Class 4A State High School Championship game between the Wapsahatchee Indians and the a &M Consolidated Tigers as we begin the second quarter. Once again, the Indians knocking on the door. They have done so on two other occasions. They have come away scoreless on both of those occasions. They have a third and three on the eighth. Lamont Moore hands off to the back. Will go down about the four. I believe that was John Jefferson on the carry as they unpile. No, instead it was Sammy Overton. Overton is quite a remarkable athlete, Ted. The 182-pound senior is going to be recruited heavily by college scouts. He does have very impressive statistics. As we mentioned earlier, he has a good chance of going over the 2,000 yards gained in this game. Coming into it, he had 1,909, and he is very talented. First and goal from the four for Waxahachie. Moore, on a keeper, will fight his way down to about the two and a half. Good goal line stand that time by the Tigers. That goal line stand in, led in part by A.D. Smith, who is one of the many outstanding talents on that defensive front wall. Ted, when you talk about size in Class 4A high school football, you have to look to the offensive line of the Waxahachie Indians. They are positively huge with 282, 246, and 240 on the roster. Man in motion. Now he's set out wide. Keeper. And he's going to get his legs cut out from underneath him as Lamont Moore tried to sneak over. They'll mark the ball at about the one-yard line. Jimmy Zunn did a very good job from his defensive line position for him consolidated and actually getting into the legs of Lamont Moore. If he doesn't make that play, uh, Lamont Moore has enough uh, uh, momentum that he's going to be into the end zone. But good play by Jimmy Zunn. Third and one yard to go for a touchdown for Walter Hatchie early in the second period. Lamont Moore, the quarterback. And Moore will try to sneak it across, and he does. Touchdown, Walter Hatchie Indian. And you can hear this large crowd in the Astrodome cheering for the green and white Indian. A very good crowd on hand, both. And from Waxahachie. And this game is within an extra point of being all tied up. And there's a whistle and a flag on the play. And this is not where you want to have a penalty, Ted, on this extra point. This is critical. Now, as closely played as this game is, every, every penalty is crucial. is going to go against the Waxahachie Indians. They'll mark it back five yards. And that may not make any difference. Five yards with a good kicker, and this young man, the sophomore, Samson Gannett, is a good kicker. May not make that much difference. But a missed extra point will make the difference in a close ball game like this. Most definitely in this type of football game. The snap, the kick is up, and it's good. So it's all tied up with 10-12 left in the first half between the Waxahachie Indians and the A&M Consolidated Tigers. We'll be back for more action right after this. For some time now, you've seen our commercials on TV. 
They're not just ads. They're a commitment from Commerce National Bank to the people of Bryan College Station. Does it make a difference where you bank? Yes. We're committed to providing all the financial strength and services you need, both today and in the future. And that's a personal commitment from me to you. Commerce National Bank. A Big Mac and a Diet Coke, please? Get the extra value meal. It's only $2.99, plus you get fries. We'll just have some of yours. No, no, I ordered fries because I want fries. They're mine, not yours. If you want fries with dinner, get your own. Mom, you could have some of my fries. I'll just have some of your father's. No. With our $2.99 Big Mac extra value meal and low-priced Happy Meals, the whole family can get exactly what they want for dinner. What you want is what you get. Free refill? I'll just have some of his. And the crown the Waxahachie Indians, undefeated with a sparkling 15-0 record, ranked number one in Class 4A, have just scored the tying touchdown in this championship game. It's all knotted up at seven each. Ted, that, that psychologically has got to have done the Waxahachie Indians a dose of good. No question with uh, Henning Consolidated taking their opening possession and driving down for the score making it seven to nothing and then Waxahachie had to take several uh, offensive pos possessions before they were able to get on the scoreboard but both teams know they can they can move the football and both teams on offense are very still very confident in this game. Samson connects to kick off for Waxahachie. The kick is high. It'll be taken at about the eight yard line. Nice piece of running. Jeff Watson was the return man there. And you don't always see a quarterback returning, but with his athletic ability, and he does such a good job in finding that opening field that he's a very effective kickoff return man. Jeff Watson burst upon the scene last year as a sophomore and led his team to a state title. And as a junior this year, he has been simply superb. And perhaps even better news for Coach Ross Rogers is that he'll be back next year. Exactly. He's a very talented player. They spot the ball at the 27-yard line. First and 10 for the Tigers. Shotgun formation. And this is going to be a halfback pass. And it will nearly be picked off. He pitched back to Austin Banks, and Austin Banks threw a pass down the left sideline, but it was well covered by the Indians defensively. Waxahachie likes to use, have their free safety John Dollar just play the kind of a zone roving area, and he was in good position, but the tip just, just didn't come quite far enough for him to make interception. And this time, Jeff Watson could not hit Pat Mize, who was wide open at about the 30-yard line. He threw it too low. And Maya simply couldn't scoop it off the ground. Waxahachie has been effective in they, with their defensive line. They like to come with a with a rush. It's almost like a blitz with a defensive line on every play. That's forcing Jeff Watson to throw maybe a little bit earlier than he'd like to. Big rush on Watson. He's got a man wide open and he overthrows him. Again, Pat Maya's down the right sideline, and, and Maya simply couldn't see the ball. Of course. Watson was rushed that time. A lot of pressure put on him, but he has some kind of strong arm, doesn't he? Oh, no question. He, uh, as we said, started that play and saw an example of it there. He is right now having to throw the ball a little bit earlier than perhaps what he would like to, and even off balance was able to throw a very deep pass, but uh, because he was forced, it was thrown a little bit long. So the Tigers, once again, will have to punt from their own 16-yard line. Kyle Bryant gets off a nice punt over the head of the defensive unit, and it'll be bounced out of bounds at about the 29-yard line, where Walker Hatchie will take over first and 10 with 9.43 left in the first half. Defensively, the Indians have shown some kind of strength. More importantly, they have shown great adaptability at the passing game of AM Consolidated. They're doing a good job yeah, back there. Waxahachie is getting some very good play from the defensive line. The two defensive 
defensive ends, particularly Corey Pointer and Dante Edwards, are doing a very good job in making penetration. Man in motion, handoff, left tackle. Sammy Overton on the carry that time. And he'll bring the ball out to about the 33-yard line. Second down and six now for the Indian. Moore looking over the defense, calls an audible. Down the left sideline on a keeper, and he gets stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Great defensive work that time, led in part by Cliff Harris. And Harris just simply refused to let him get around the corner, Ted. Cliff, Cliff Harris had good defense defensive position. Also, Lamont Moore, just as he was coming out to make execute a, to plant his foot, he stumbled on that Aston turf, and uh, that, that helped defend that play. He picked up maybe a yard on the play, third down and five. It's all tied up in the Astrodome, seven to seven. Pass. Wide open Dante Edwards, and it sailed over his head. He faked the handoff off of left tackle that time, turned around and threw to his right to Dante Edwards streaking across the middle. Good play, and I think we'll see that one again. They like to use that. That's kind of a, a throwback. It's a very effective play off of a quick hitting beer option team, and they use it very effectively in your right clip. We're going to see that some more. They like to go to that. So Samson Gannett will have to punt, and he gets one. That'll sail out of bounds, and once again, we'll have very good field position for AM Consolidated. They mark the ball at about the 46 yard line of the Waxahachie Indians. So now the Indians, which have enjoyed, have enjoyed tremendous field position throughout most of this first half, will find themselves with the shoe on the other foot as the Tigers have an opportunity here. It's exact. A flip-flop of what it was earlier, as you said, Cliff, particularly in the first quarter, Waxahachie had some very good field positions off the kicking game. Now we're seeing uh, AM Consolidated had the same. And the screen right up the middle as they let the pressure backs come in. He tried to and did hit successfully Austin Banks. Austin Banks did a very good job of making that reception. Once again, Jeff Watson was forced to throw a little bit earlier than he would have liked to. He was off balance, threw a little high, but uh, he was, had a tremendous reception. Austin Banks. No huddle offense. Pass down the left sideline. Got a man wide open and just barely off his fingertips. Oh, my goodness gracious. Troy Walters just could not hang on to it. It was just off his fingertips. And Jeff Watson operating from a shotgun without benefit of a huddle, let one fly down the left side. Troy Walters had the touchdown reception on their first uh, series of, of uh, offensive possession in the first quarter, and almost had another one then. Third and five from the shotgun, shovel pass again to Austin Bank around the left side. He's got some downfield blocking. He carried two people with him all the way down to the 15. You talk about the multiple attack of a &M consolidated offense, and there it is. They uh, are going deep on one play. They're running off tackle the next, and then the little shuffle pass there breaks it wide open and gets them in excellent field position. And that looks like something out of Tom Landry's playbook for the Dallas Cowboys. The little shuffle pass. First to 10, the ball spotted on the 16. Walters in motion to the right. Watson right over the middle, incomplete. Tried to hit James Williams that time. But again, we've got to credit Waxahachie's defense. They had that well covered. Here's a case of two teams with outstanding speed and quickness. And it is remarkable how much alike they are in those categories. As a result, you're seeing a tremendously close defensive football game so far. Motion in right this time. He'll keep it on a keeper. And he'll get hit at the line of scrimmage by Joe Garber. 
So Watson on who elected to keep it up the middle took a very good lick from Joe Garber that time. Yeah, that play was by design was for uh, Watson to keep the ball. He took the deep snap and just almost immediately tucked it to run. But again, Waxahachie had it well defended. And Waxahachie goes over to the sidelines as A&M Consolidated calls a timeout. We have 7.07 left in this first half. It's all tied up. A&M Consolidated scored first, and the Waxahachie Indians followed it to make it 7-7. It's been as close as the score indicates. Each team having scoring opportunities and both teams showing great defense against some very high-powered offensive attacks. When sports writers across the state predicted that this would be a close football game, they were exactly on the money. And I'll tell you what, if you bought a ticket here to the Astrodome today, you got your money's worth already, and the first half is not even over. You know, if we just looked at the offensive uh, teams of, of both Waxahachie and them Consolidated, this far into the game, it's almost a highlight film in itself as, as far as their execution and being able to do the things that they're trying to accomplish. Well, let's see what Coach Ross Rogers has cooked up on a third and eight situation. As we see Walters in motion to the left. Tip and nearly intercepted. Watson that time tried to hit Mize around the right side as he sent Walters in motion to the left to distract the defensive secondary. But they were right there. They're still doing good defensive secondary coverage on the part of the Waxahachie Indians. Yeah, and, and both units, both defenses, we're seeing some very fine defensive play, but that uh, that was very well defended. Kyle Bryant now will try a field goal from his own 22 to a 32-yard attempt. The kick is up, and it's good. And now the Tigers take a 10-7 lead with 6.57 left in the first half. We'll be back for all the action right after this. Christmas or graduation gift for the Aggie on your list. Call 1-800-793-5443. C.J. Allen and his staff at Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu wish to thank all their customers for an outstanding 1992. To help move out inventory by the end of 92, all Oldsmobiles and Isuzus are at invoice prices. That's right, now through December 31st, any Oldsmobile or Isuzu in stock will be sold at invoice. Plus, discounts up to $10,000 on Cadillacs. No reasonable offer refused, so hurry in to Allen Olds Cadillac Isuzu during the invoice sale, now through December 31st. Happy holidays from Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu. A 32-yard field goal by AM Consolidated Kyle Bryant has made it a 10-7 ball game now over the Waxahachie Indians. A very close contest here in the Astrodome between these two 4A powers. And everything is on the line here today, Ted. You don't hold anything back in a state championship game. And in a way, this game is the most fun game of all because you can sit back and just play football. Yeah, this is one of those that you work for. It's kind of like the top of the mountain. You work so hard all year to get to this position. And uh, really and truly, there's no loser of this game because both teams are champions just to get here. But certainly, there's only one team that's walked away truly pleased from this one. Ryan will kick it up high, taken at about the 22-yard line. He's going to be brought down rather quickly. Corey Pointer was making the return on that. Uh, one advantage of a kick like that is you obviously do, do not get it deep, but by gaining the height and kicking it across the field, it gives your coverage time, team time to get down there. Corey Pointer had to spend what he must have thought was a half an hour waiting for the ball to come down, 
He had a, a, a very effective return, but by the time he gets to feel the ball, the coverage is up on him. A kick that high is very difficult to feel in the lights of the Astrodome. First and ten, handoff straight up the middle to Sammy Overton. And Overton will carry the ball past the 35 all the way to perhaps the 36. No, they'll mark it at the 37. 640 and counting down here in the second period. AM consolidated holding a 10-7 lead over Waxahachie. Neither team has broken its basic game plan, Ted. It's still going and dancing, as Darrell Raw used to say, dancing with what brung them, and it's doing them quite well for them. Yeah, both teams are still doing what they want to do. Pitch out to the left side. Again, well defended. Lamont Moore pitching out to Sammy Overton. Pat Jones from his cornerback position and uh, Cliff Harris made a very good job in stopping that. If they don't make that play at the, close to the line of scrimmage as they did, that's the type that can be the big yard breaker. But they did a very good job in, being, in shutting that down really before he got started. It will be a third down and a long three for a first. Ball resting just inside the 40-yard line of Wasahatchee. Man in motion to the left, and they'll hit Sammy Overton. And boy, did he take a lick. Now, he may have picked up the first down, but he paid the price that time. Shadner Goodwin, number 45 for him Consolidated, did a picture-perfect type of tackle in it, showing why he is one of the uh, this year's Class 4A All-State selections. They're going to bring the chains out to measure it. It looks from here, looks to me like it's a little bit short, but it's so difficult to tell from this angle as we see them stretch the chain. Oh, it's going to be very close. I mean, very, very close. You see the indication by the referee, just the nose of the football. Now, do the Indians gamble at this one time and go for it with fourth and mere inches, or do they take the safe route and kick it? What do you think, Ken? They, they have the capability of going for it. A quick hitting offense with the surge they get from the offensive line, where, where as we saw, it's only, uh, you would say, an inch, but I, from looking on the binoculars, it's less than an inch. So all they need to get is any type of forward surge, and they got it first down. On the other hand, Fairly risky part of the field to be trying it. If they don't make it, they're giving and consolidated the ball with old momentum. Well, apparently the Indians have decided they'll go for broke. On four inches. On four. Calling an audible. And there's going to be flags on the play. And I think that one of the Indians moved before he got it set in his position. And what a puff penalty it will turn out to be. I don't know if they were going to sit and try to draw in him, consolidate off sides, or actually go for it, but you can credit Cliff Harris uh, for a &M consolidated. He had a, lo a lot to do with influencing that jump by a walk to Hatchie at the line of scrimmage, which takes them, obviously put, puts them into a punting situation. So Samson Gannett will now punt the football with a fourth and six facing him from his own 23-yard line. No pressure, but there are flags on the play. Gets another high punt. Gets down about the 33 and takes a roll and a bounce. And will be finally whistled dead at about the 22. But hold it. We've got flags on the play. Actually, there's one of those deals that's flags all over the field. So, Ted, you know, I, I go back to what we talked about earlier. The mistakes that you're seeing the Waxahachie Indians make may be the difference in this ball game and that shows the poise of a team like AM consolidated they've been in this big game before they certainly have uh, before the game coach ross rogers was uh, quoted as saying that one of when he was asked why his teams have had so much success and part of his answer was that uh, they set goals they stay focused and he said anytime a team loses their focus mistakes occur and you can certainly credit and him consolidated so far as playing mistake-free football. Well, the penalty was called against the Indians. 
A punt again. What a boomer this time by the sophomore. And it will be fair caught at about the 28 yard line by none other than the quarterback, Jeff Watson, for AM Consolidated. Jeff Watson did a very wise move there in, in signaling the fair catch and catching the ball. Uh, if he doesn't make that catch, that with the arc that that football was traveling on, it was going to hit and roll deep into AM Consolidated territory. So the mere fact he had zero return yardage is really kind of an unspoken asset because he saved a lot of yards by making that stepping up and making that catch. What a bright future the sophomore punter has for the walk to hatching Indians though did. He's really got a foot on him and I'll tell you what he's got two more years to develop that ability. Really has a nice uh, hang time as he punts. Jeff Watson the man under for the Tigers. Looks, passes incomplete. And Watson perhaps is not having, at least this first half, the best passing game he's had in the playoffs. One of the reasons is perhaps the pressure put on him by the rushing Wasahatchee defense. I think that's a big factor, Cliff. He's, he's being forced to throw just a little bit sooner than what he would like. And there's a good example of it right there. Good move. And he'll not pick up the first down, or will he? A scrambling quarterback. He's so very, very dangerous. And when they finally bring him down, it'll be close. And they'll probably bring out the chains. It's going to be close, but it, again, from our angle, looks to be a little bit short. But uh, still, we're seeing quite an athletic ability in Jeff Watson. They are. As we've talked, Waxahachie's putting a lot of pressure on him. He elected to keep the ball and move for a very significant almost first down. Of course, Coach Scott Phillips of the Waxahachie Indians as we see them stretch the chain out. Of course, he has a great defensive game plan and that's called rushing the quarterback. And that's what they've done so far in this first two quarters to put a lot of pressure on Jeff Watson. Well, it's third down and one. Actually, less than a one. Actually, and you see the quarterback keeper, and he'll pick up a first down. The Class 4A state championship game between A&M Consolidated and Waxahachie is being made possible by Commerce National Bank your Bryan College Station McDonald's, Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu, and KBTX TV3. And there's a penalty against the... Well, a penalty called against the A&M Consolidated Tigers will now make it first and 15. Ball resting on their own 35-yard line. 348 left in the first half. Pass complete. And an immediate flag on the play. You may see a face mask that time, Ted. Rudy Majetti caught the pass. And we see Austin Banks injured on the play down on the field. And instead, they're going to call a penalty against the AM Consolidated Tigers. So both teams have committed some very costly penalties in this football contest. Particularly on this drive, uh, we had spoken earlier about how AM Consolidated was staying uh, focused, avoiding the penalties. And here uh, on this particular drive, they are being forced to repeatedly overcome uh, situations that they're putting themselves in due to the penalties. And as we see Austin Banks still down on the field as the trainers are attending to him, we certainly hope that young man has not sustained a serious injury. Austin Banks has had a good year too, Ted. He's not only a good runner, he's a very good receiver. And you see him now up on his feet. I think he just got his bell run. Actually, they were working on his uh, left leg and uh, more in the uh, below the knee joint. You always sort of cringe when they start working on the leg it, in the knee joint area, but feared they were working more in the uh, the muscle area. And 
I guess if you have to have an injury, it's better to have it away from the knee joint. And perhaps he's going to be back in the game. Ball will be spotted at the AM Consolidated 38 yard line. Second down, about 12 to go. Receivers stood out wide on both sides now as Watson operates from the shotgun. Swings to the left, look. Kenny Kessel led the charge to sack quarterback Jeff Watson. And I'll tell you what, neither one of these teams are giving ground right now. No question, and both teams are playing their game plan as they started out to. The defense of Waxahachie is still doing exactly what they want to. They're bringing their defensive line on a strong rush on every play. They're getting good containment by their defensive ends, which allows interior linemen to take off and come and they're putting a lot of pressure on the, the quarterback and yet in him consolidated on offense is staying exactly what they want to do and here's a quick kick how effective second time we've seen it this afternoon and it worked both times this time there's no flags on the play and they'll whistle the ball dead at the 25 yard line they faced a third down and 18 situation and that has some kind of a psychological effect on a team in the sense that it disarms the team. Uh, no question. Or defuses them, maybe. You know, we don't see a, uh, a lot of the quick kick. And in a situation like you talked about, Cliff, uh, rather than go for the long pass, risk interception or incomplete, uh, the quick kick is a very effective tool in moving the ball down or setting up the, the other team deep in their own end of the field and play defense from that standpoint. Moore back to pass, and he's being pursued. They're still chasing him, but he gets it away. He hit John Dollar complete under tremendous pressure. What a pass rush in consolidated put on him. Matt Jones was doing everything he could to catch up with Lamont Moore, but not before the quarterback from Waxahachie unloaded a pass to John Dollar. Ball is now on the 36-yard line. 221 left in this first half. Pitch out, sweep to the right. To John Jefferson, and Jefferson gets nearly to midfield before he's brought down. Mark it at the 48-yard line. Well, Waxahachie likes to spread things out as well that we saw on these two two plays. Their first hit one side of the field and then attacking the other and being productive at both. Again, heavy, heavy pressure on the part of Annam Consolidated, and they have him scrambling. And this time, he's going to get sacked for a tremendous loss. What a great play by Tommy Jackson, who chased Lamont Moore all over the football field and finally brought him down at about the 30, make it the 33-yard line. Tommy Jackson did an outstanding job. Well, Lamont Moore is very difficult to bring down an open field. In fact, Lamont has a lot of confidence that he require, will require more than one person to bring him down. Tom and Jackson did a very good job in open field tackle to give the sack for NM Consolidated. Well, there's timeout on the field with 142 left in the first half. AM Consolidated holding on to a 10-7 lead. I think it's interesting, Ted, to note that both defensive teams are mirroring each other because they're sending in heavy pass rush. They're very, very true observation, uh, Cliff. We've got uh, almost identical situations that, that each defense is putting the offense into. And uh, that, uh, you know, the old saying, offenses draw crowds, but defenses win championships. And we're, we're not going to see a championship team emerge from this game without good defensive play and certainly both teams are playing to that caliber now where did those saying come from did they come from coach Darrell Royal I think he said it many times <laughs> it's second and 24 the ball on their own 34 yard line as the Wasatchee Indians send a man in motion to the left option keeper and there's a fumble on the play as he's finally brought down. You well, know, I tell you what, you, you know, it takes it takes five guys in a Mack truck to bring him down. He's such an elusive runner. Well, I tell you what, that's about 
you won't see many plays where they run more miles and gain only two or three yards than that play, but that is a potential game breaker where you have the pass out to the flat and then work your option off of that with the receiver becoming, in essence, the option quarterback outside. That does put a lot of pressure on the defense quickly to the outside. You've got to give A&M Consolidated credit. They did not lose their outside containment, and as a result, they were able to defend that play. There's another timeout on the field as we have 122 left on the scoreboard clock in this first half. And I'll tell you what, the Waxahachie Indians have got one minute and 22 seconds left to march some 65 yards downfield. And they have the ability to do it in a very short and quick fashion. But I'll, I'll tell you what, I've got to be impressed with both defensive teams because they have literally been running all over the football field. Yeah, we've had a lot of defense, very fine defensive play in this first half from both units. Third and 21. Moore looking, passing, going for the home run ball. It's going to be almost picked off. Well, Dwayne Price would like to have that opportunity again because he was all by himself and just he was successful in making it an incomplete pass. But uh, Corey Porter was was on the outside and Moore throws it on the inside that time. Yeah, I think the ball got away from uh, Lamont Moore. No question. If he was uh, by design, he's either going to throw the ball so it's complete or if it's an incomplete, it goes to the outside. Uh, one of the rules is you don't throw that one to the inside, but it just it was one of those slip or got away from him so now we have a fourth down 21 situation and the Indians will punt it from their own 22 yard line Samson Gannett no pressure again high high punt that'll be taken on the fly at the 35 he fumbles the football walk the hatch has got it he's going down the left sideline and they may have ruled that he stepped out of bounds Boy, you talk about critical turnovers. There's one for you. A big turnover. Uh, on one hand, you got to admire uh, a and Consolidated for stepping up in there and catching that punt because if they don't field it, that's going to be a big roll against them, losing a lot of yards. But what a time to mishandle it. It's sort of a dangerous punt, uh, punt to be catching in a crowd. And as we say, oh, it just bounced right into Waxahachie's hands. And AM Consolidated decides to take a timeout on the field with 107 showing on the scoreboard clock. Now the situation has the Waxahachie Indians with the football on the Tigers' 40-yard line. And if they, with a couple of good running plays or a couple of plays, period, they gain any kind of yardage said, they could at least be down in field goal territory. Yeah, what a change in strategies. Uh, Andy Consolidated was prepared to get the football and perhaps do the same, put pressure far enough down the field to perhaps get in field goal position. Now with the bobble punt, the reception or a recovery by Waxahachie, Waxahachie is now in a position to work the, the clock and the yards to at least get in the scoring position. So far this afternoon, AM Consolidated has done a very good job in bottling Sammy Overton up of Waxahachie. But they haven't stopped Lamont Moore, as you see him. Rare back. He's got a man open. Complete. Oh, my goodness gracious. Lamont Moore through a frozen rope to Terry Vincent, to Vincent Terry. And we talked about getting in field goal range. They certainly are now. They're down to the Tiger 22-yard line. You, with one you, minute left. You know, again, we see the the versatility of the Waxahachie offense. They are, by design, a run team, but there they use the passing game for big yards. Pitch out to Jefferson. He'll swing around the right side and get knocked out of bounds. And not before he goes down to about the 17-yard line. And now they are very much in field goal range with 47 seconds left, though, Ted. In a second down and four situation, they have the opportunity to make possibly a first before ever thinking about putting it up in the air. And no question, time is still with them. Moore looking, has a man, and it's nearly picked off in the back of the end zone, a front of the end zone, that is. And once again, Dwayne Price had the football in his hands and drops it. Of course, you've got to credit him 
for being in there and making being in position to make that play but uh, I know he would really like to be have come down with that ball in his hands. This football game is not for the weak hearted. Like a roller coaster up and down. Third and four. Pitch out to Jefferson around the left side and he's going to get stacked and thrown for a loss by Cliff Harris. Cliff Harris showing again why he is one of this year's class 4A all state selections. He made a very good play at a critical point in the game. So now the Indians decide to take a timeout. They had the ball down inside close to the 15. And they've taken steps backward, and that's, of course, not what Coach Scott Phillips wants his team to do. They have a fourth down and eight situation, 33 seconds left. So they're either going to have to go for it all with a touchdown, or they're going to have to take the sure field goal. And I would think that with the leg that you've seen from Samson Gannett, that he'll try to boot it. Now, if he kicks it from about the 28, that's going to be a 38-yard field goal, Ted. Ball is on about the 20. He should kick it from about his own 28. Well, this is within his range, so there's no question then that why uh, head coach Scott Phillips is elected to go for the field goal, which in this case, if they make it, brings will bring the game to a tie going into halftime. Well, I missed it by a yard. He'll try it from the from the 20, 26. The kick is up. Boy, he got a lot of leg into it, but he booted it off to the right side. He had the distance, but he missed the angle. Actually, it was a good kick. Came off the, the tee very good. Uh, a lot of force into his leg, but just the direction of the ball was just to the outside. Two field goal attempts now have gone astray for the Indians. And it's still a 10-7 ball game with 28 seconds left in the first half. And at this point in time, you've got to believe that the Tigers will most likely run out the clock and try to regroup at halftime. Two very evenly matched football teams. The very best in class 4A. That's exactly what we'll see as you see Watson hanging onto the football and they'll let the clock run out. We have 15 seconds and counting down. So these two teams will go into the dressing room at halftime with only a field goal separating them. And we'll be back for all the halftime show right after this. A Big Mac and a Diet Coke, please. Get the extra value meal. It's only $2.99, plus you get fries. We'll just have some of yours. No, no, I order fries because I want fries. They're mine, not yours. If you want fries with dinner, get your own. Mom, can I have some of my fries? I'll just have some of your father's. No. With our $2.99 Big Mac extra value meal and low-priced Happy Meals, the whole family can get exactly what they want for dinner. What you want is what you get. Free refill? I'll just have some of his. <laughs> For some time now, you've seen our commercials on TV. They're not just ads. They're a commitment from Commerce National Bank to the people of Bryan College Station. Does it make a difference where you bank? Yes. We're committed to providing all the financial strength and services you need, both today and in the future. And that's a personal commitment from me to you. Commerce National Bank.
For some time now, you've seen our commercials on TV. They're not just ads. They're a commitment from Commerce National Bank to the people of Bryan College Station. Does it make a difference where you bank? Yes. We're committed to providing all the financial strength and services you need, both today and in the future. And that's a personal commitment from me to you. Commerce National Bank. A CADCRAFT carving in solid walnut is the perfect Christmas or graduation gift for the Aggie on your list. Call 1-800-793-5443. C.J. Allen and his staff at Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu wish to thank all their customers for an outstanding 1992. To help move out inventory by the end of 92, all Oldsmobiles and Isuzus are at invoice prices. That's right, now through December 31st, any Oldsmobile or Isuzu in stock will be sold at invoice. Plus, discounts up to $10,000 on Cadillac. No reasonable offer refused, so hurry in to Allen Olds Cadillac Isuzu during the invoice sale, now through December 31st. Happy holidays from Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu. A Big Mac and a Diet Coke, please. Get the extra value meal. It's only $2.99, plus you get fries. We'll just have some of yours. No, no, I order fries because I want fries. They're mine, not yours. If you want fries with dinner, get your own. Mom, can I have some of my fries? I'll just have some of your father's. No. With our $2.99 Big Mac Extra Value Meal and low-priced Happy Meals, the whole family can get exactly what they want for dinner. What you want is what you get. Free refill? I'll just have some of his. And the McDonald's
Christmas or graduation gift for the Aggie on your list. Call 1-800-793-5443. CJ Allen and his staff at Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu wish to thank all their customers for an outstanding 1992. To help move out inventory by the end of 92, all Oldsmobiles and Isuzus are at invoice prices. That's right, now through December 31st, any Oldsmobile or Isuzu in stock will be sold at invoice, plus discounts up to $10,000 on Cadillacs. No reasonable offer refused, so hurry in to Allen Olds Cadillac Isuzu during the invoice sale, now through December 31st. Happy holidays from Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu. Welcome back to the Astrodome in Houston, Texas for the beginning of the second half of the 1992 Class 4A State High School Football Championship. Cliff Brown along with Ted Coy as we get ready for this second half kickoff between Wapahatchee's Indians and A&M Consolidated Tigers. And the Indians will receive the second half kickoff. Brian's the kickoff and he gets his foot into it and it will go out of the end zone for a touchback. Ted, we talked about it during halftime. This 10-7 ball game is every bit as close as the score indicates. Missed opportunities on the part of both teams has kept the score low. I would expect that we would see continuous blitzes on these quarterbacks because they're option quarterbacks. They have a lot of mobility and the only way to stop them effectively is to literally uh, blitz them or swarm at them constantly. Uh, no question. I don't. I think we're going to see both teams staying with their original game plan on both offense and defense. Lamont Moore, the quarterback, hands off to Sammy Overton right up the middle. Overton gets all the way out to the 25 before he's brought down. Overton, for the most part, has been pretty well bottled up in the first two quarters. But he's such a dangerous runner. You know, he didn't get 1,900 yards by just being a mediocre halfback. There is no question. Waxahachie has the personnel that can make a big gain in a hurry. And you're right, Cliff. He has been well contained by the and in consolidated defense. Just as we're seeing uh, LeJohn Jefferson, who's a fine, quick-hitting running back, stop there with a, virtually no gain. Nick Eastman in on the tackle for the a &M Consolidated Tigers. They just will not give ground. They'll bend a little bit, but they will not give. And we're talking about the defensive units of both teams as we have a third and five situation for Waxahachie. Third quarter just underway here in the Astrodome. It's 10 to 7. A&M consolidated over Waxahachie's Indians. A pass. Incomplete. And that time he tried to hit Creighton Phillips and just underthrew him a little bit. You know, Cliff, to recap the scoring at the opening possession in the first of the game, AM consolidated drives down, scores on the Troy Walters 30 yard pass to make it seven to nothing. Lamont Moore comes back in the second quarter for Waxahachie on a one yard run to tie it up. And then Kyle Bryant kicks a 32 yard field goal to make it 10 to seven. And that's where we stand right now in the third quarter. Samsung Gitkinet will punt the ball for the Indians, and he gets a good roll out of it, an excellent roll, in fact. It's going to go all the way down to about the 25-yard line of A&M Consolidated. That's a difficult situation for the receivers of A&M Consolidated to be in. That's a difficult ball to field, and yet if they don't catch it, even on a fair catch, the ball is going to hit and roll for a lot of yards. And in a game like this, where the defenses are playing so extremely well, each yard is so tough to come by, you hate to let the ball just roll on and on, putting you deeper into the, in your own end of the field. But yet, we saw early in the game, A&M Consolidated tried to make a, uh, to feel one of those punts, and they uh, turned it over to Walt Tatchy. Jeff Watson scrambling, and they're going to sack him. Oh, my, Joe Garber. Dante Edwards 
and several more defensive players for the walk of the Hatchie Indians were all over Tiger quarterback Jeff Watson that time he ran laterally and actually lost the yard to bring up a second and 11. Two receivers split out wide to the top of your screen from the shotgun. Jeff Watson looking, pass complete at about the 32 yard line. Right on the button to James Williams. And I'm surprised we haven't seen more of that pass on the part of the Tigers, particularly during the first half. I think they've thrown it twice now and completed it both times. Yeah, it has been a good uh, a, a good gainer for and consolidated. Third and four from the shotgun. Again, pressure. And sacked again. They just can't keep Walk the Hatches Joe Garber out of the backfield. But they am consolidated. And a third and fourth situation now turns into a fourth and ten situation for AM consolidated. They're going to have to punt it away. Well, we've got to get, again, we're seeing uh, the game dominated by the defense. Opening possession by uh, Walk the Hatchie. They were forced uh, to punt. And now we're seeing AM consolidated turning around and having to punt after a good defensive stand by Walk the Hatchie. Kyle Bryant kicking from his own 18, and he gets a good kick with a good roll and it will be picked off at the 25 and he's going to return it all the way up to about the 34. Rudy Majetti on the return. Once again, Walk the Hatchie will have the football. A classic defensive struggle simply because these two teams with their high-powered offensive units have been shut down by the aggressive pursuits of their counterparts. You know, Waxahachie is being particularly effective on defense by the rush of their defensive lines. The defensive ends come, come hard and fast. The defensive, uh, interior defensive lines come hard and fast. On the other hand, AM Consolidated has been doing good getting the line of screen. Sammy Overton slides by two or three tacklers and drives it all the way up to midfield. That's his best run of the evening. And the 182 pound senior actually slid off about three would-be tacklers, got into the secondary, and was finally pulled down just short of midfield. We were just talking, Cliff, that how Venom Consolidated has been effective in not allowing that very play, and I think that's probably the best gainer that Sammy Overton uh, has had this game. Overton in motion, handoff straight up the middle. Jeremy Russell on the carry off the left tackle slot. He moved the ball down to about the 47 yard line. 7.53 in this third quarter. It's 10 7. AM consolidated over Waxahachie. At stake is the Class 4A State High School Football Championship. to the left. We'll keep it. He's got some daylight. The 20, the 10, the 5. Touchdown. Lamont Moore. And that's what you call the quarterback option to perfection. No flags on the play. That touchdown will stand. 47 yards for the score. And the walk to the Indian crowd goes crazy. Waxahachie has taken the lead in this game for the first time, and that's an example of how explosive the option can be. And in consolidated, all get, this game has been very effective in defending it. Uh, Lamont Moore comes out on what was a, a routine uh, option to the outside. He keeps it. He busts it open, and he has great speed to make the touchdown. Vanson gets the net. Kick is good. And it's 14 to 10 with the Waxahachie Indians leading with 7.27 in the third period. We'll be back for more right after this. The Class 4A state championship game between A&M Consolidated and Waxahachie is being made possible by Commerce National Bank, your Bryan College Station McDonald's, Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu, and KBTX TV3. 
A Big Mac and a Diet Coke, please. Get the extra value meal. It's only $2.99, plus you get fries. We'll just have some of yours. No, no, I order fries because I want fries. They're mine, not yours. If you want fries with dinner, get your own. Mom, can I have some of my fries? I'll just have some of your father's. No. With our $2.99 Big Mac extra value meal and low-priced Happy Meals, the whole family can get exactly what they want for dinner. What you want is what you get. Free refill? I'll just have some of his. <laughs> Micon Engineering designs electrical components used by companies around the world. And out of this world, too. I'm Paige Heller, president of Micon Engineering. And I'm Alan Hansen, president of Commerce National Bank. Micon was one of only four Texas companies to receive a contract for Space Station Freedom. Without the business capital loan from Commerce National, we wouldn't be working on the NASA project. Commerce National, the only bank that can call College Station home. B.J. Allen and his staff at Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu wish to thank all their customers for an outstanding 1992. To help move out inventory by the end of 92, all Oldsmobiles and Isuzus are at invoice prices. That's right, now through December 31st, any Oldsmobile or Isuzu in stock will be sold at invoice. Plus discounts up to $10,000 on Cadillacs. No reasonable offer refused, so hurry in to Allen Olds Cadillac Isuzu during the invoice sale, now through December 31st. Happy holidays from Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu. A CADCraft carving in solid walnut is the perfect Christmas or graduation gift for the Aggie on your list. Call 1-800-793-5443. Well, the Astrodome has erupted on the green and white side as the Waxahachie Indians have scored a touchdown to take a 14-10 lead over the Indian Consolidated Tigers. What an outstanding run by quarterback Lamont Moore as we see kicker Samsung Get the net, preparing to kick off. And that will put the spark and the momentum back on the Indian side. You know, this has been kind of one of those nip and tuck games dominated by the defense and a significant run as Lamont Moore was able to come up with makes a big difference in this game. Get the next kick is high. It will be taken at about the four yard line. Nice run all the way back up to the 30 by the quarterback, Jeff Watson. Jeff Watson does a very good job in finding that little opening uh, crease on the kickoff return. Uh, the play would have been uh, a decent return if he had gotten it in the vicinity of the 30, a 20 yard line, but instead he gets to the outside, gets the extra 10 yards, and they line up just uh, outside the 30 yard line. Well, you had to believe that it was only a matter of time before the Indians would score. They're too good on offense to be held to a single touchdown. You saw that explosive ability right there. And there's a classic example of their defensive frown. Uh, the defense has been very effective, particularly along the line of scrimmage for Waxahachie. They've been able to get in on the rush to stifle the passing game, and yet we see how tough it is to run on it. Rudy Majetti stopped that time for a pickup of only two. Receivers split out wide on both sides. They send Majetti in motion to the left from the shotgun. Watson passing, got a man wide open, Pat Mize. What a great play from Jeff Watson to Pat Mize all the way down to the Waxahachie Indian 42-yard line. And just like that, here come the Tigers. Well, definitely you don't count them out. They uh, are having, as we said, a lot of difficulty in dealing with the defensive line of Waxahachie, but there's ways around that, and we're seeing them open up their offense and getting some significant yards. No huddle offense again. Watson looking. Passes complete. That time he hit James Williams. And again, Jeff Watson's very effective in finding that little slot. There's not much time for him to be making his reads, but he's taking what they are giving him, and uh, we've got to credit uh, James Williams for doing a good job of finding that little opening and making the catch. Ball's on the 23-yard line of Waxahachie, shotgun, shovel pass. 
swinging out to the right. Austin Banks trying to cut the corner. He gets down to about the 16. And you know, Ted, the no huddle offense run by the Tigers, when they work it to perfection and they have that rhythm, really does wreak havoc on a defense. It does keep the defense from making some of the adjustments that they otherwise would have had time to do with the huddle. It does put a lot more pressure on the defense. Second down and two. Look, passes wide open. Touchdown, a and consolidated to Pat Myers. Jeff Watson to Pat Myers made it look easy. You talk about a comeback at your touchdown. There's an example of offensive explosion. The exactly way to describe it, Cliff, uh, they exploded. They, they have been, in essence, bottled up. We've talked about the uh, effective line play that Rock Patch has been able to come up with. And a and Consolidated was very effective in putting the ball in those creases, finding the receiver, moving down for the touchdown. Kyle Bryant's kick is up, and it's good. With 5.43 left in the third period, these two teams have swapped touchdowns, and it's 14 to 17, and in consolidated leading. We'll be back for more after this. A Cadcraft carving in solid walnut is the perfect Christmas or graduation gift for the Aggie on your list. Call 1-800-793-5443. Big Mac Extra Value Meal and low-priced Happy Meals, dinner at McDonald's should actually sound as good to you as it does to your kids. What you want is what you get at McDonald's tonight. David, bath time. What? what? David? Micon Engineering designs electrical components used by companies around the world. And out of this world, too. I'm Paige Heller, president of Micon Engineering. And I'm Alan Hansen, president of Commerce National Bank. Micon was one of only four Texas companies to receive a contract for Space Station Freedom. Without the business capital loan from Commerce National, we wouldn't be working on the NASA project. Commerce National, the only bank that can call College Station home. With 5.43 left in this third period, in what had been a defensive struggle, particularly in the third quarter, We've suddenly seen two quick touchdowns, Ted. You know, Cliff, it's, it's like we had a little window in an otherwise defensive-dominated game on both sides. Both offense, both defenses are shutting down the offenses. Waxahachie breaks the long run with Lamont Williams off of a veer play, scores a touchdown, and it's just that quick. and m Consolidated comes back on the next possession, and within two minutes, they march the length of the field to score a touchdown. So all at once we see the emergence of both offensive units. Kyle Bryant to kick off for the Tigers. And he gets his foot into it. It'll go out of the end zone for a touchback. Well, if you wanted excitement, the Astrodome is the place to be for the Class 4A state championship. These two, these two teams are just giving no quarter right now. And they are having a fierce battle on the line of scrimmage. I, I tell you, one of the things that you need to look for is that tremendous blocking by both offensive lines. First and 10 for Waxahachie. Jefferson in motion. Instead, they hand off to Sammy Overton. He slides by three different tacklers, and he's finally brought down at about the 30-yard line. Now, we're seeing why Sammy Overton coming into this game has gained 1,909 yards. He's very difficult to get a, a straight-on hit on him. He's, he's cutting, he's slashing, he's got that ability to make those quick little turns in the midst of the traffic. And as a result, he breaks a lot of tackles for runs like what we just saw. Pat Jones brought him down for a &M Consolidated. It's another first down from their own 30. Again, Jefferson in motion to the left. They try the same play, and they get about six on this play, which was a, an identical play to the previous one, or very close to it. 
You know, Cliff, we've talked about how the defenses have pretty much dominated this game up until this point in the third quarter. And there we see Sammy Overton on two consecutive plays, gaining 16 yards. And uh, it's just ama uh, amazing how we've kind of had a little opening in the defenses that both offenses have been more productive. Second down, the ball on the 37-yard line. Moore sends Overton in motion, but pitches out to Jefferson. Jefferson slides by three different people and crosses past midfield to about the 47-yard line of AM Consolidated. And I wonder, Ted, if you've seen some fatigue on the part of the defensive units, and I say that on the part of both defensive units, because they have been marching up and down the field all afternoon long. Well, we're seeing there just some of the the execution the way the offense would like to have it done they're able to get to the to the pitch to the outside uh, he makes a very good touch brings it back to the inside finds that little open space fights for the little extra yards and we're seeing some significant yards being made on the ground by what's hatching Overton in motion to the right oh my did he get sacked Yes, sir, Lamont Moore got sacked in a big-time fashion by number 88, Tommy Jackson, helped in part by Johnny Swab. You know, once again, we see Tommy Jackson coming with a very significant play. We were just talking about how Waxahachie was getting, suddenly getting yards and big chunks, and now this is very significant for them to be facing the uh, second and the long situation. It's second down and 18. The ball's resting on the Indian. 43-yard line. Moore on a keeper along the right side. He'll pick up short yardage to about the 48-yard line. He gets outside so quickly, he's able to, to put a lot of pressure on the outside on defensive containment to either take the pitch or allow him to keep for the, the quick yards turning up field. And, and uh, the Tigers are doing a good job of reading that. Third and 13 now. I'm kind of curious, Ted, as to why we have not seen perhaps a reverse play to the wide side as hard as the defensive teams are pursuing the offense. That is a good point. That's something we may be looking for. Waxahachie calls a timeout to talk things over. We will, too. We'll be back right after this. C.J. Allen and his staff at Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu wish to thank all their customers for an outstanding 1992. To help move out inventory by the end of 92, all Oldsmobiles and Isuzus are at invoice prices. That's right. Now through December 31st, any Oldsmobile or Isuzu in stock will be sold at invoice. Plus, discounts up to $10,000 on Cadillacs. No reasonable offer refused, so hurry in to Allen Olds Cadillac Isuzu during the invoice sale, now through December 31st. Happy holidays from Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu. Micon Engineering designs electrical components used by companies around the world. And out of this world, too. I'm Paige Heller, president of Micon Engineering. And I'm Alan Hansen, president of Commerce National Bank. Micon was one of only four Texas companies to receive a contract for Space Station Freedom. Without the business capital loan from Commerce National, we wouldn't be working on the NASA project. Commerce National, the only bank that can call College Station home. <laughs> David, dinner time! That's how you David, dinner! Come on, David, we're going to McDonald's! Whoa, we gotta go, guys! With our $2.99 Big Mac Extra Value Meal and low-priced Happy Meals, dinner at McDonald's should actually sound as good to you as it does to your kids. What you want is what you get at McDonald's tonight. David, bath time. David? It's 17-14 in this 4A state championship game. A&M Consolidated holding on to a slim three-point lead. But the Waxahachie Indians are driving with 2.45 remaining in the third period. Third down, 13 to go. Overton in motion to the right. And there we see a halfback pass, possibly an option. And he's going to be pulled down for a giant loss. We just got through talking to you about 
a possible reverse, and that was a version of it to Corey Pointer, who actually on the reverse, Ted, looked like he had the option to either run or pass. Well, actually, he was looking for the pass primarily off of that, and Cliff, you're right, you had just been talking about the uh, the presence of a reverse with the type of offense that Walks Hatchie runs where they get quickly to the outside one direction coming back with a reverse. They did it, they executed it well, but so did uh, the Tigers, and they defended that extremely well. Get the Mets cut, it's high, but it will be short. Gets a great roll. Oh my, what a roll that will go all the way down to the 17 yard line of AM Consolidated. Again, we see the effectiveness of Gittinette, Samsung Gittinette's punt. It's a difficult ball to field. In fact, it even looks like a squib kick, but it has hit and rolled directly against AM Consolidated. So it's a difficult ball to, to field, and yet if they don't field it, uh, it, it takes the walk patchy roll to put AM Consolidated back in beyond the 20 yard line. 154 remaining in the third quarter. Jeff Watson hands off around the left side to James Williams. Williams still going. And they'll tack him on a, a flag. Well, we're going to see a clip, a clip called on that play. It was uh, it, it was one of those situations where the as the block was started to be thrown, it was legal, but by the time contact was made, the arms come out. That's going to bring that play back. So a double penalty, if you would. Not only do they have the penalty assessed against them, but it would appear that James Williams took a hit on his leg. And he's still out at the 50-yard line where officials are looking him over. You know, he showed a lot of speed, uh, Cliff, on that particular reverse. Waxahachie uh, read it very well, but with his speed, he was able to get to the outside in a hurry turn up field and get the big yards that he was able to before the uh, penalty. First and 10 for the Tigers. They're on their own 35. Receivers again split out wide on both sides. Quick pitch around the left side. Rudy Majetti knocked out of bounds. Actually, a pickup of only a yard on that play, so it will bring up a second down. Nine yards to go. Watson from the shotgun, shovel pass again to Austin Banks, and he's going to go past the 45 to perhaps the 48 yard line. And I'll tell you what, that's about the third or fourth time they've used that shovel pass, and it has worked every time. You know, Austin Banks lifted a very good job of knowing down in distance on that particular run. He actually, they made, walked as he made contact with him before he was able to get a first down, but with his uh, lowering his head and power drive, he was able to get the first down. Watson, the home run pass down the right sideline and he'll overthrow his receiver. You know, one thing, Cliff, that we're seeing both offenses do, and that is handle the ball a lot. We see a lot of the pitches for uh, when Walks Hatchie has the ball and with AM Consolidated, they're exchanging the ball with pitches and passes. And on a day like today, it's certainly an advantage for both of them to be playing in the Astrodome where the surface is dry, the ball is dry. Outside, we've got a combination of rain and mist, which if this were an outdoor game, we'd be dealing in some awfully sloppy conditions, and yet both teams are able to play to their perfection in this Astrodome environment. Second down and 10 as we see Watson turning out to his right, and he underthrows Creighton Thompson. Now, he just tried to hit Thompson on the home run pass, and he comes right back to him again on this little short pass that goes incomplete. And that's going to once again put AM Consolidated in a box. It is interesting to note that AM Consolidated moves the ball better when they're behind than when they're ahead. They certainly do. They certainly have. Watson again. Option run. 
He's got some running room, and he bulls his way out of bounds, but not before he gets down to about the 40, perhaps the 44-yard line. He will not pick up a first down. And it's going to be an interesting call because it will bring a fourth down and perhaps perhaps about two. I think Coach Ross Rogers is going to go with his defense. Uh, he's going to punt away in this situation because if they go for it and don't make it with it, the explosiveness of the walk to Hatchie and if they get the ball with a little bit of a momentum, that could be dangerous. Fourth down and three. A fake punt by the quarterback. He pitches out to Kyle Wright, and the walk to Hetchy Indians read it all the way. They lined up in a punt formation. The snap went directly to quarterback Jeff Watson, who tossed it to Kyle Bryant. Bryant tried to sweep the left side. Walk to Hetchy was there to greet him. You know, that play is going to work big for you either way. If you make it, it uh, gives momentum, and you're going to continue your drive. If you don't make it, as we see happen, it was well defended, well read by Waxahachie. It gives Waxahachie the football at midfield and a chance to go the other direction. First and 10 at midfield. 46 seconds left in the third quarter. Handoff straight up the middle to Overton. Again, he slides by the initial wave of tacklers and gets down past the 45 to perhaps the 44. Yeah, that shows a little bit of the effectiveness of, uh, of Sammy Overton as a runner. He was able, he's got a lot of quickness and a quick acceleration. As we talked earlier, rarely does he give the defense a straight shot at him. He's uh, elusive enough, but in that case, he came to a complete stop and was able to accelerate, and the opening came and got a very good gain on that. This will be the final play of the third period, as you see Vincent Terry in motion. Right up the middle, LaJohn Jefferson. And the junior 175-pound running back will pick up the, four, the first down with two seconds left on the scoreboard clock. They mark the ball at the 37-yard line. And that's going to do it for the third quarter with our score. AM Consolidated, 17. Walk to Hatchie, 14. We'll be back for the fourth and final quarter right after this timeout. The Class 4A state championship game between AM Consolidated and Waxahachie is being made possible by Commerce National Bank, your Bryan College Station McDonald's, Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu, and KBTX TV3. Micon Engineering designs electrical components used by companies around the world and out of this world, too. I'm Paige Heller, president of Micon Engineering. And I'm Alan Hansen, president of Commerce National Bank. Micon was one of only four Texas companies to receive a contract for Space Station Freedom. Without the business capital loan from Commerce National, we wouldn't be working on the NASA project. Commerce National, the only bank that can call College Station home. A CADCRAFT carving in solid walnut is the perfect Christmas or graduation gift for the Aggie on your list. Call 1-800-793-5443. Big Mac Extra Value Meal and low-priced Happy Meals, dinner at McDonald's should actually sound as good to you as it does to your kids. What you want is what you get at McDonald's tonight. C.J. Allen and his staff at Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu wish to thank all their customers for an outstanding 1992. To help move out inventory by the end of 92, all Oldsmobiles and Isuzus are at invoice prices. That's right, now through December 31st, any Oldsmobile or Isuzu in stock will be sold at invoice. Plus, discounts up to $10,000 on Cadillac. No reasonable offer refused, so hurry in to Allen Olds Cadillac Isuzu during the invoice sale, now through December 31st. Happy holidays from Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu. The walk to Hatchie Indians gamble, and it pays off. Riverboat gambling by quarterback Lamont Moore, and he 
picks up the first down. What an incredible call by Coach Scott Phillips as the ball now rests on the 44-yard line of AM Consolidated. So rather than AM Consolidated getting the ball with a little over two minutes, Waxahachie has it with a chance for four more snaps to run the clock down. And off to Overton. He cuts back. And he'll get down to about the 33. And the AM Consolidated Tigers defensive team has been on the field a long time. We're seeing some big games at a point that are favoring Waxahachie. It's at a time when and Consolidated desperately needs to make the stop to get the ball. On the other hand, Waxahachie's getting the yards when they need it. And they're already celebrating on the Waxahachie side, but there's still a lot of football left here with 147 left in this contest. Terry in motion to the left. Moore on the option. And Moore's going to be stopped at about the 30. Tigers bottle him up but right now. The clock, which has stopped at 1.36, is definitely not in favor of AM Consolidated. As they call it. was pretty ineffective the first two periods, but he has certainly come alive in the second half. Yes, consolidated defense certainly had him bottled up as far as what relative to how he normally plays, but right this third quarter and start of this fourth quarter, he is really getting big yards. He picked up six on the play. They call a timeout on the field. I think we have an injured player down for Consolidated. Number one, Dwayne Price is the injured uh, Tiger player as he came up to make the stop on Sammy Overton. And the trainer's out on the field. And there you have a look at some of the walk the Hatchy crowd. They brought a tremendous following down for the game here in the Astrodome. And of course, directly across the field, the AM Consolidated fans turned out in great numbers too. A lot of pride shown in these programs by their respective communities. There you see a shot of some of the consolidated crowd. And now the officials are about to get the two teams started again. Lamont Moore. Right up the middle again. And John, John Jefferson gets the carry that time. They apparently think and see some kind of weakness right at the very center of that consolidated defensive unit. They have been going there. They're, they're one of the reasons is they're able to have such a quick hitting attack there, and that's what uh, Waxahachie really utilizes is their quickness. And when they're going straight forward, they are able to hit that point of attack extremely quickly. Third and one for the Waxahachie Indians. Receiver stood out wide to the left. Instead, a handoff right up the middle to Jefferson. And Jefferson will pick up the first down. Now, this drive has not been flashy, if you would, but it has been consistent. Perhaps the most consistent drive of the Indians all afternoon long. They have. They've been chipping away, making the first downs, staying on the ground. Uh, we've not seen anything fancy, but keep in mind they do like to use the throwback pass uh, off of the as an option in the play action that they're using right now. Ball resting just outside the AM Consolidated 22. And again, Jefferson gets the call right up the middle. You also got to believe that by playing right up the middle that they're setting up 
consolidated. And I bet you we're going to see a setup to the wide side. Yeah, that very that very well may be part of their their uh, uh, offensive attack on this series because they have been effective in going consistently at the same part of the defense. Second and seven. Moore on a keeper gets past one, two, and finally three tackles before he's run out of bounds. Here he saw an example of Lamont Moore's elusive ability and his talent at shedding tacklers, if you would. Chase are good and was able to force him out of bounds, but as you say, Cliff, there were several consolidated players that had uh, at least a hand on him before that. And uh, he's a very quick runner and a very strong runner. It's hard to bring down with just an arm tackle. First and ten. The ball is on the ten-yard line, and a and Consolidated is going to take a timeout to we'll talk it all over. The team goes over to the sideline to discuss things with Coach, Coach Ross Rogers. The game plan by both of these coaches has been brilliant. They have not tried a great deal of fancy maneuvering, i.e. trick plays, but they have done a lot of ball handling plays. Both teams have. And as we've talked throughout, they, they pretty much stayed with their, their original game plan. They're not being forced, either offensive unit is not being forced into things that they're uncomfortable with. As we've talked about, uh, they have had the ball moving around a lot. But, uh, the option pitch by uh, Walton Hatchie and also the play, the passing attack. Same with uh, Adam Consolidated. So both teams have been moving the ball around, but they're staying within their game plan. Congratulations to the 5A Division II champions, the Temple Wildcats. Beat Houston Yates earlier this afternoon. And our congratulations to the AA champion, the Schulenberg Shorthorn, who defeated Goldthwait here in the afternoon in the Astrodome earlier this afternoon. Overtime. Bounces off about three tacklers, drives down to about the five. Well, that's called making something out of nothing because a and Consolidated had jammed the line and he still drives it down to the five. And as we talked, Sammy Overton has that ability to avoid a direct hit from the defense, which on the other hand, because of that, he stays on his feet a lot and is able to pick and choose those little last second openings to give him the extra yards what looks like uh, a no gain turns into a, to a significant gain. Moore down the left side. He'll go over. Lock the hatches. Lamont Moore, the quarterback, on an option keeper down the left side. Slides in. Plus five yards out. And now the walk to Hatchie Indians have taken the lead with 9-08. Ted, this may be a football game with the winner being the team that scores last. Question. Both teams are, are being very effective, again, staying within their game plan late in the game. Samsung get the next kick is up, and it's no good. It hits the crossbar. Oh, how big that may turn out to be, because the margin will still stay at three rather than a four-point margin. That could be very critical. Certainly that puts the, the effectiveness of the field goal uh, a big part, provided the score uh, stays within this range. We need to point out to those who may not be aware of it, there are no winners in a tie ball game at the state championship level. They are declared co-champions. In other games, the winners advance on the basis of penetrations, first downs, yards rushing, but at this level, in the championship game, should there be a tie, both teams would be declared co-winners. So that missed field goal, at least as long as the score is staying as close as it is, uh, that missed field goal is a big one. Missed extra point. Still a lot of time on the scoreboard clock here in this fourth and final period. The Wakahatchee Indians have put together a very good drive, very time-consuming consuming drive and a 
have gone ahead now 20 to 17. Sanson gets the net. The kicking specialist for the Waxahachie Indians is a very talented young man, and he's only a sophomore. You talk about pressure, what about kind of field goals attempted in the state championship game when you're a sophomore in high school? The kick will be taken at about the eight-yard line. Once again, look out, he may be gone. One man, he's all the way at the 40, the 30. Watson's at the 20, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Jeff Watson, AM Consolidated. What a, what a comeback on each instance that Waxahachie has gone in front of AM Consolidated. They have scored the next time they've gotten the football. 92 yards run back by Jeff Watson. And back in your face comes the AM Consolidated Tigers. You know, what? We, what a seesaw battle we have here in the Astrodome. Cliff, we were talking about how Jeff Watson is, is a quarterback, and it's a little bit unusual to have your quarterback as your kickoff return man, but he does such an excellent job in finding that little crease and that little seam, and in that case, he had some good blocking that set up the, the, uh, the path. He got in the little, little crease, and he was off for the touchdown. Kyle Bryant's kick is up, and it's good. With 8.55 left in this football contest, it's 24 to 20. AM Consolidated regains the lead. Well, you know, if you're a Waxahachie Indian fan, you've got to be a little disheartened. Your team puts together its most consistent drive of the afternoon. They look particularly good. They go in for a score. They take a three-point lead, and in the blink of an eye, in one play, a 92-yard run back puts a &M Consolidated ahead again. You know, it, uh, it, that, for Waxahachie, that is very discouraging because from each instant, the Waxahachie has taken the lead in this football game. a &M Consolidated has scored on the next time they got the football. And in this case, they didn't even wait to get the offensive unit on the field. Jeff Watson takes it 92 yards and on a great, actually, only uh, 13 seconds ticked off the clock and he covered 92 yards so he didn't waste around with many sidesteps in his route to the touchdown that also points to the good blocking because you just don't go 92 yards like that without some type of opening to find it and get into it and go all the way kyle ryan to kick off for the a&m consolidated tigers before we will say it again you certainly got your money's worth here in the Astrodome in the Astrodome this afternoon as these two teams just will not give up and once again for Waxahachie Sammy Overton and LeJohn Jefferson are back receiving the ball is going to go in and out of the end zone for a touchback so Waxahachie will take over on their own 20. you're right Ted not a lot of time kicked off the scoreboard clock but the psychological damage was just incredible as that 92-yard drive, I mean, that 92-yard run just broke it back open for the a &M Consolidated Tigers. Watson actually got through the bubble at about his own 25-yard line. And once he got into the secondary, there was only one man between him and the goal, and he followed the blocking very, very wisely. And then it was a foot race. more on a keeper pitches out to Overton who's got some room to run there's going to be a flag he got the ball all the way up to the 28 generally in a situation like that it's a face mask but we'll wait the official's uh, signal on that well how about that one there's a break that the walk to hedge Indians did not want to get we saw the uh, official's the signal of uh, holding, which is certainly going to back, back uh, Walks Hatch up. But, uh, and you got to wonder who was holding on that play. The, uh, the flag was thrown immediately as he rounded the corner. And the initial contact at that point was uh, the ball carrier being hit with the, by the defensive uh, player. And normally that's going to be a face mask, but uh, not so in this case. It's against Walks Hatchie. 
and it puts them into, rather than having a significant gain, we got them uh, backed up with a second and 12 situation. And we have flags on the play again. And Waxahachie apparently has called a timeout. They apparently saw something on the defense they didn't like, so they call a quick timeout. I wonder, with 8.27 left in the contest, however, if that was a wise move. They may need that later on down the line in either stopping consolidated or helping to preserve a drive of their own. That may prove to be costly to them. Certainly a, in a closely played game, as hard fought as this one is, each team wants to preserve as much as advantages as they can get, and your right cliff to be able to hang on to your timeouts sometimes can be very beneficial as you get in the later part of the game. Second down and 12. The ball is resting on the 18-yard line of the Waukehatchee Indians. A beautiful 92-yard run back of a kickoff from Waxahachie Indians by Indian Consolidated Jeff Watson put the Tigers back in the lead 24 to 20. Moore hands off right up the middle and Jefferson makes good yardage all the way up to about the 27 yard line. And in him consolidated as Dan Daniel came up with made a very good tackle on as we've talked to Sammy Overton and Jeff Le, uh, LeJohn Jefferson both very elusive runners they're very hard to get an open field tackle though that wasn't truly an open field Dan Daniel came up uh, made a very good tackle. Vincent Terry in motion to the left again the handoff up the middle this time to Sammy Overton. He'll pick up a first down at about the 31 yard line. And the Indians seem to be going back to game plan number one. And that was the game plan that saw them do a methodical offensive drive all the way down the field for a touchdown. You're right. We, we, we saw NM consolidated counter with a kickoff return, but NM, uh, but uh, Waxahachie is still being very effective with their running game. Just those short yards here and there and keeping the chains going. That time Johnny Swab stopped Vincent Terry after a short game. I think it's absolutely fascinating the way that AM Consolidated has been able to overcome adversity in the sense that every time they've been behind, they have quickly gotten back in the lead. It's very unusual. Keeper pitches out to Overton and he run out of bounds. And we're going to have a flag on the plate, maybe a late hit. Yeah, if that's, uh, that does stand to be, it's going to be a late hit because uh, he was clearly out of bounds. But, you know, in a game like this, it's hard to uh, criticize it defensive play because it's a hard fought game and all of all the personnel have their motors turned on and it's just sometimes very difficult to know when to shut it off at a moment like that. I think they'll call a penalty on Pat Mines of a &M Consolidated. They mark it off and it'll go all the way down to the 43 yard line of the Tigers. First down in the go with 6.51 left in this football contest. AM Consolidated holding on to a 24 20 lead. Again, the hand straight up the middle. This time, it's Tommy Jackson who puts the stop on Overton. And I'll tell you what, between Tommy Jackson and Johnny Swab, the Indians have found the middle running tough going in this last series. Well, those two players, as, as you mentioned, Johnny Schwab and uh, Tommy Jackson, have been very, very effective. They have been very difficult to block. Second down, nine for the Indians. 
Moore on a keeper, and Moore is not going to get anywhere. And guess who stopped him? Tommy Jackson. Tommy Jackson was in on the play once again, and you know that's what it takes in the latter moments of a championship game. Where everybody's still playing with the same intensity. This may be the most important third down play the Waxahachie Indians have faced all year long. It's hard to say, but right now with a third and seven, they have the football on consolidated 40-yard line. Moore hands off up the middle to Jefferson. And Jefferson is going to get very close to the first down. What a gutsy call by the Waxahachie Indians as they do indeed pick up that first down. That was a key third down because that uh, that's and there's nothing fancy about that. That's just a straight handoff going straight forward and they were able to get the uh, the needed yards, the seven yards for the first down. Key part of the drive. I'll tell you what, these two teams have faced each other like this all afternoon long and neither one of them has blamed. What a fake by Lamont Moore and finally pitches out to Overton. You talk about holding on to it till the last moment. That, that's a lot of poise to do that. In fact, uh, a lot of well-coached quarterbacks are unable to execute that as Lamont Moore is to be able to hit that precise section, second to make that pitch. That's the kind of play that is guaranteed to put gray hairs in a coach's head, I promise you. They spot the ball at the 24-yard line of AM Consolidated. Second down, less than two to go for a first. Again, Moore on the keeper. He's got some room. He slides outside. He's at the five. He's diving for the end zone. Did he make it? And they say he did not make it. He will be short about two yards. Now, that's the same play that Lamont Moore earlier in the game uh, had the, uh, the long run, the 46-yard run for a touchdown. Same type of action, same type of finding that little crease and clearing the line of scrimmage and going for the big yards. First and goal, the ball resting at about the one-yard line. Nail-biting time in the Astrodome with 4.48 left in this contest. Did he make it? Yes, sir. Touchdown. Tammy Overton goes over from a yard out. And the Indians regain the lead. And Ted here, the real key question is, will they kick off to Jeff Watson? Certainly, that's going to be have to be a part of their uh, their their thinking. But uh, as we commented, each time that Walks Hatchie's taken the lead, and in consolidated, he's been able to come back. Here's a big play. They're going for two points. More on the option, and he's going to dance in. Oh my! What a gamble, and it paid off for the Indians. Lamont Moore on the keeper goes for and makes two extra points. 28-24, Waxahachie over A&M Consolidated. And it's a little wonder that they went back to the option. They've been very effective, particularly in the fourth quarter, with getting some significant yards, and he, again, made those extra two yards for the two points. What do they say? No guts, no glory. And when you're playing for the state championship, if you're ever going to gamble, this is the place to do it. Of course, actually, a, the kick extra point would have not been that significant because it would have still just given them the three-point lead from which uh, Consolidated would be able to tie it with a field goal. On the other hand, they went for the bigger margin, and they got it. 4.44 left here in the Astrodome. It's 28-24. Walter Hatchie leading and m Consolidated. And you can see the green and white on the Walter Hatchie crowd side going crazy. But oh, the quick strike capability of the Consolidated Tigers. They've done it all afternoon long. There's no reason to believe that they're going to lay down now. They didn't win a state championship last year and the man the kind of record they had in the last four or five years by being quitters 
or laying down when the pressure got to him. No question with four minutes, 44 seconds left in this game, there's a lot of time for both teams to be doing something. Two quality football teams on the field here today in Houston. Hands on, get the net, kick off. Walk that to Indian. And I would expect to see, we'll see a squib kick of some kind. There you see it. Good hop. And that is very difficult. The field is taking it about the 10. And look out, he gets all the way back up to the 25. An outstanding return on a very hard to catch kickoff. Very good return by uh, Austin Banks. It was uh, one of those bouncing balls that bounced the wrong way for Consolidated, but yet he was able to get it and return upfield and make some, a very good return out of it. The ball is on the 26-yard line of a and Consolidated. They trail by four points, as you see. The quarterback passes incomplete on Jeff Watson to Creighton Thompson. Right now, what you don't need to have is a quarterback who's going to succumb to pressure. Jeff Watson has got to retain his poise and take charge and proceed to march down the field for the go-ahead score. Second down and 10 from the shotgun. Again, Watson hits Austin Banks incomplete. And that was a very catchable football, I thought. It, it looked like it might have been tipped just before it got to him. And Corey, Por Corey Porter may have gotten a hand I, on it. I, I think he did. It looked like he deflected it just enough to knock it off its course and make that reception not possible. From the shotgun again, a lot of pressure on him. And Watson is going to have to be, yes, he gets a big-time sack. Is one of the key defensive fans of this contest. Under pressure, the Walker Hatchie defense rallies. As you saw, Watson get sacked there. And they'll have to give up the football on a fourth and 14 situation on their own 22 yard line. Yeah, that was a series that uh, the Tigers certainly would have liked to have at least gotten out of their end of the field. 53 left as we see Kyle Bryant get a high punt, excellent punt, taken at about the 39 yard line. And Rudy Machetti will be brought down at about the 42. Walk the Hatchie will have the football from their own 43 with 341 left in this contest. You know, big situation for Waxahachie. If they're able to make, keep the ball on the ground, make a first down, then they have an opportunity to run the clock out. Yeah. They'll, but Ted, they'll have to have at least two first downs in order to preserve a victory here. On the other hand, for NM Consolidated, what they need to do is prevent that to get the ball back with some time left on the clock. Man in motion, fumble, and he recovers his own fumble. Moore, perhaps concerned about what he should do with the football, never got a handle on it. He recovers quickly, and he lost about two, maybe a yard. Receiver spread out wide to the top of your screen now. Moore, on the option, pitches out. Overton. Down the right sideline before he's bounced out of bounds. Sammy Overton, who has been one of the keys for the Indians in the second half of play. That was a significant uh, game for Waxahachie. They, they, he was able to be forced out of bounds, which helped hit him consolidated in stopping the clock. But as we said, it's bringing up another one of those third and five situations. It was 10-7 at halftime. It's now 28-24. These teams exploding in the second half. 
handoff right up the middle off the right side he'll cross past midfield down to about the 49. And we're going to have a fourth down situation. Fourth and about three. So once again, the Waxahachie Indians are going to have to give up the football to the AM Consolidated Tigers. And they, they have plenty of time. There's 233 still left on the clock. Well, we have a little bit of a strange situation. Waxahachie is calling timeout. Uh, two minutes, 33 seconds. There was enough uh, time on the, the game clock for them to run it down to about the two minutes. But they elected to uh, stop the clock. Uh, perhaps they're feeling that confident with their defense that they can hold them and have enough time to get the ball back. With our score, 28-24, Waxahachie leads A&M Consolidated. We'll be back for more right after this. The Class 4A State Championship game between A&M Consolidated and Waxahachie is being made possible by Commerce National Bank, your Bryan College Station McDonald's, Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu, and KBTX TV3. A Cadcraft Carving and Solid Walnut is the perfect Christmas or graduation gift for the Aggie on your list. Call 1-800-793-5443. Micon Engineering designs electrical components used by companies around the world. And out of this world, too. I'm Paige Heller, president of Micon Engineering. And I'm Alan Hansen, president of Commerce National Bank. Micon was one of only four Texas companies to receive the contract for Space Station Freedom. Without the business capital loan from Commerce National, we wouldn't be working on the NASA project. Commerce National, the only bank that can call College Station home. B.J. Allen and his staff at Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu wish to thank all their customers for an outstanding 1992. To help move out inventory by the end of 92, all Oldsmobiles and Isuzus are at invoice prices. That's right, now through December 31st, any Oldsmobile or Isuzu in stock will be sold at invoice, plus discounts up to $10,000 on Cadillacs. No reasonable offer refused, so hurry in to Allen Olds Cadillac Isuzu during the invoice sale, now through December 31st. Happy holidays from Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu. <laughs> David, dinner time. Not you it. David, dinner. I Come on, David. We're going to McDonald's. Whoa, no, we gotta go, guys. With our $2.99 Big Mac Extra Value Meal and low-priced Happy Meals, dinner at McDonald's should actually sound as good to you as it does to your kids. What you want is what you get at McDonald's tonight. David, bath time. What? What? David. The Waxahachie Indians gamble, and it pays off. Riverboat gambling by quarterback Lamont Moore, and he picks up the first down. What an incredible call by Coach Scott Phillips as the ball now rests on the 44-yard line of A&M Consolidated. So rather than A&M Consolidated getting the ball with a little over two minutes, Waxahachie has it with a chance for four more snaps to run the clock down. Hand off to Overton. He cuts back. And he'll get down to about the 33. And the AM Consolidated Tigers defensive team has been on the field a long time. We're seeing some big games at a point that are favoring Waxahachie. It's at a time when and Consolidated desperately needs to make the stop to get the ball. On the other hand, Waxahachie's getting the yards when they need it. And they're already celebrating on the Waxahachie side, but there's still a lot of football left here with 147 left in this contest. Carry in motion to the left. Moore on the option. And Moore's going to be stopped at about the 30. Tigers bottle him up but right now. The clock, which is stopped at 1.36, is definitely not in favor of A&M Consolidated. And they call a timeout. And that may be, Ted, their last timeout. I'm not sure. The 
Waxahachie Indians undefeated this year with a brilliant 15 and 0 record hold on to a 28 24 lead they trailed at halftime by the score of 10 to 7 for the first two quarters it was a defensive struggle but in the third period both teams began to explode offensively the lead is seesawed back and forth most of the third and fourth periods there you see the scoreboard clock This has to be one of the finest games in the history of state high school football championship between two super 4A teams. No question, it has certainly lived up to the billing that it was given for this game. Overton in motion to the right, or on the keeper. He's got some running room and they'll knock him out of bounds. Or did he stay in bounds? I think he stayed in bounds. Yeah, he was able to stay in bounds, and of course, that's going to keep the clock running and get them uh, again in a critical third down situation. And that puts the ball on about the 24 yard line, where it's a third down and two. This is a big third down for any of them consolidating. They hope to get the ball back. They've got to stop them on this play. 58 seconds left on our scoreboard clock. Moore, hands off to Overton. He gets the first down and then some. And that may have put the nail in the coffin, Ted, right there. You saw Sammy Overton drive all the way down to about the 13-yard line where they pick up a first down. And we have 48 seconds, and now he's counting down on the scoreboard clock. It would appear that a &M Consolidated quest to repeat the back-to-back -back state championship will be denied. Well, it's extremely difficult to tackle a Sammy Overton without getting a straight shot on him. In fact, in that exchange, there were some, there were some uh, hits at him, but he is able to do a tremendous job of getting in the open and get that needed first down. And Lamont Moore just drops down on one knee and him consolidated, immediately calls the timeout. We have 20 seconds in this contest, and the Waxahachie Indians appear to be headed for the Class 4A State High School Football Championship. What a magical year for Coach Scott Phillips and his Indians. Scott Phillips and the Waxahachie Indians have had a banner type of year. Uh, he was quoted in the paper as having told Coach Ross Rogers last year that these two teams would meet in this game and certainly it's been a big year for Waxahachie and Coach Scott Phillips. And on the other side of the field, what about Coach Ross Rogers when you're 55 and you've only lost six games? You've won 55 and lost only six in the last four years. That's pretty good bragging rights in itself. No question, especially before he came in and consolidated, there had been something like a 17-year uh, a uh, time span before there are 27 years since they've been in the playoffs. What a season for both teams. The clock continues to count down. The walk to Hatchie Indians with four seconds left will be the new 1992 Class 4A State High School Football Champion. We'll be back to wrap it all up right after this. J. Allen and his staff at Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu wish to thank all their customers for an outstanding 1992. To help move out inventory by the end of 92, all Oldsmobiles and Isuzus are at invoice prices. That's right, now through December 31st, any Oldsmobile or Isuzu in stock will be sold at invoice, plus discounts up to $10,000 on Cadillacs. No reasonable offer refused, so hurry in to Allen Olds Cadillac Isuzu during the invoice sale, now through December 31st. Happy holidays from Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu. A CADCRAFT carving in solid walnut is the perfect Christmas or graduation gift for the Aggie on your list. Call 1-800-793-5443. The Waxahachie Indians are the 1992 Class 4A state champions by virtue of a 28-24 victory over the A&M Consolidated Tigers. And Ted, what an exciting football. It lived up to its billing. You know, we talked 
before the game and during the game about how closely these two teams were matched, how well coached, well prepared, and certainly they were, Cliff, and you've got to hand it to the Waxahachie and congratulate them. On the other hand, a &M Consolidated and Coach Ross Rogers can be very proud of their team and their performance to today because both teams played to the caliber of being able to win this game. You talk about the Waxahachie Indians, you're talking about a team that was ranked number one and they went through the entire season undefeated and that's no easy task. You know, that is very difficult because a long, uh, long season like it is, uh, it's very easy to have mental letdowns and yet to be playing this caliber of football a week after week and then to come to the state championship and to produce and actually a very hard fought game. You know, they go into the fourth quarter actually trailing and they do what it what needed to be done to win and certainly you've got to congratulate them for that. I think you probably said it best when you said that was a quality program on both sides of the line of the scrimmage. Both of these teams will walk away winners, but for the Waxahachie Indians, this is going to be a very pleasant winter. This is a very special season for them. It's, uh, it's a victory in itself to go undefeated and then to walk away with the state championship crown is something they're very proud of. And yes, both, both teams have a very bright future next year for a and Consolidated. Next year for Waxahachie is going to be a good year, but you're right, this year it's Waxahachie and our congratulations to them. Once again, our final score, the Waxahachie Indians 28. The A&M Consolidated Tigers 24 walks a hatchet, the 1992 Class 4A State High School Football Champion. This is Cliff Brown on behalf of Ted Coy and all the crew at Lar Communications Television saying so long, everybody. See you next time. Thanks for watching tonight's broadcast of the state championship game between the Tigers of A&M Consolidated and the Indians of Waxahachie. Tonight's broadcast has been made possible by your Bryan College Station McDonald's, Commerce National Bank, and by Allen Oldsmobile Cadillac Isuzu. This has been an LCTV Sports Production, copyright 1992. No portion of this telecast may be reproduced without the express written permission of LCTV. You've been watching Class 4A State Championship Football on KBTX TV3. <laughs>
back in August. These Tigers knew their goal. They wanted a chance for another state championship, but that would take hard work and a lot of dedication. <laughs>
The Indians will receive the kickoff goal in the second half. They have kicking off on the west. Oh, GTE. Thank you all for your support.